Shooting the ash. What a doodle. Hey. How to do it. Welcome everyone to Shooting the Ish. How's it going, guys? It's going great, guys. All right, all right, I'm all right. Everything's good, everything's all right. Anybody see anything good this week? Uh, I mean, I saw something I wouldn't consider it good. Um, I saw a doc, uh, courtesy of HBO Films, called The uh, Cheshire Murders. Uh, it was um, basically a documentary about the um, the home invasion. What? What? Did, yeah, what was that all about? What home invasion... Brian, I think he just dropped dead. <laughs> it was his home invaded right now. <laughs> Brian, are you there? Brian, if you have home invaders, knock three times. Oh my god, he's dead. Oh shit, we lost him. All right, is so it? this is a, this is a two man team from that from here on forward. We we have no time to grieve. Damn it, leave. <laughs> oh, my Lord. All right, I'm going to call him back, actually. Uh, yeah, what happened? <laughs> it's, it sounded like he just fell off his chair. <laughs> Brian? Yeah, sorry. I'm, I <laughs> did not uh, see this coming as soon as we were going to get off the air. <laughs> were, you, were you a victim of a home invasion? <laughs> no, I do- let's just say I dodged a bullet, you know, in that case. <laughs> what, are you all right? What happened over there? Yeah, apparently some some genius decided to reboot uh, the Verizon Fire system. I had no idea it was going to affect my phone as well. So, <laughs> yeah, scary. Anyway, your your files. Enough, enough, yeah, enough about me. How uh, do you, did you guys see anything? Yeah, well, we'll talk. We'll talk about that. I also saw the act of killing, which I have so much to talk about in, in regards sure to that movie. Did. But let's let's get let's get the Hollywood nonsense out of the way, shall we? Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> oh Define nonsense. yeah. Well, All okay. Right. I just saw Wolverine in 3D, so that's <laughs> double oh, 3D? nonsense. 3D. <laughs> One of my friends actually <laughs> saw that. He said he said it was pretty good. Now, again. I don't really know his taste in movies that well, but he said it was an overall good X-Men movie. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm talking about, I'm just calling it Hollywood nonsense because uh, the act of killing was so profound, and then I saw that. But right. um, it, it was fun. It was, um, it was Brian, why didn't you see it? You're like a comic book fan. How did I see this? I mean, I'm just not interested in Wolverine's uh, storyline. I don't know. Something about it that just doesn't compel me to watch it. Like, I'm into, like, Batman, Superman, and I'll tolerate Spider-Man, but we clearly know he's kind of gay. That's a whole other story for another time. But I just, I don't know, the whole, like, memory loss thing, you know, it's been done to death, and you know, he's and the fact that he's uh, immortal, and you know, he can't be killed, it's, I just I have no interest in seeing that. So, wow. fair enough. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I kind of like Wolverine. I like a, he's like a badass character, like Iron Man. No, he's, yeah, he's, he's a badass character, but I just, I don't know. Well, all right. Here was the, here was the plot, I guess, of the movie or the premise. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, in World War II, uh, Wolverine is being kept in a Japanese prison camp in Japan, in, Ooh. in Nagasaki. That's original. As the bomb drops. As the bomb, as the atomic bomb drops, he saves he saves a guard and covers the guard's body, uh, taking the blast of a nuclear bomb. Right. Um, so the guard has become old, but the guard still doesn't want to die. So he calls back Wolverine to um, see if Wolverine does want to die. So they they found a way that they could transfer powers, basically. Uh huh. And that was the plot of the movie. The movie itself wasn't wasn't too bad. It was kind of it was pretty enjoyable actually. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, they had some goofy, gimmicky comic book stuff, like having a um, skinny Japanese sidekick with bleached red hair that could uh, perfectly fight anyone in karate and kill multiple people in a in a minute. Um, 
But they they did one really stupid. Well, it wasn't stupid. It it helped. It worked in terms of the story, but they kept doing flashbacks to Jean Grey. Uh huh. And in my whenever I saw it, those moments did help the story, but they were also a constant reminder of how bad that last X Men movie was. <laughs> right. And every way, time yeah. they did it, I just felt like saying, "Shit, forget about that stupid X Men movie." Like you're you're reminding everyone of how bad that old X Men movie was. I guess, right. I mean, it's there. They ex- they can't erase it, so... No, I'm just saying, uh, I know they were trying to reference uh, The Last Stand because the story is supposed to take place years after, you know, spoiler alert, Wolverine kills Jean Grey, Grey when she was in the Phoenix uh, mode. So, I mean, but yeah, I don't understand why they would want to reference that film, which actually begs the question, what if, uh, Darren Aronofsky, you know, did get a chance or did go forward with his um, uh, material, you know. What's that? What did he want to do? Well, here's the thing. He was one of the, he was the first to have the material and they were going to have him direct it, but uh, he backed out for whatever reason. And well, he then, did? Uh, oh, yes. Yeah, he did. And then uh, really? the director, James Mangold, took over. Why, why did he walk off or why did that fall apart, Brian? Um, uh, this is just based on my assumption. I guess, you know, him working on a, a studio project would mean that, um, he would still have to, you know, answer to, you know, the, the studio, in this case, 20th Century Fox. And, you know, he probably wants to come up with something original as a standalone film. And he basically just didn't want feel like answering to, you know, the uh, studio heads. That's that, at least that's my assumption. Cause if you look at his past films, they're all, you know, uniquely original, uh, from Requiem to the wrestler. And they're very unconventional in, in this great sense. So yes. I guess for him, yeah, you know, I just, I just feel like, you know, if he did this film, uh, there would be a hell of a lot of in- interference from the studios and, and Marvel Comics and whatnot. So. There's definitely the notion that they can't give up on the storyline once it started. So there, mm. I felt like the only things that hurt this movie were things from the past because they had to loop everything together. Right. Whereas um, if they just went full forward with it, just Wolverine and he gets into the middle of whatever situation and uh, he, he's just a funny character... In like um, in a political situation, that's kind is kind of good, you know, right? Because he doesn't, he's not supposed to care, and he's just supposed to be the badass that um, that he is, right? Yeah. So the fact that they keep um, trying to tie all these movies together, Marvel's been doing that. I think in this case, hurt hurt uh, the movie a little bit, little scenes oh. here and there. Gotcha. But but the story uh, was good. The story was basically how Wolverine got his groove back. He oh. Had, okay. um, they gave him a Japanese girlfriend, oh, okay. and um, the whole thing took place in Japan, or for the most part. Mm. And uh, the the bad girl or the bad guy, I suppose it was a bad girl. It was a mm. viper, a spider woman. I don't know if uh, excuse me, not a spider, uh, a snake, a snake poison villain. <laughs> I don't know if that's like is that an X Men character or is that something new. All I know is that just sounds funny on paper, but who's keeping track? Yeah. <laughs> um, but but it, it is, a, I guess, a relevant superhero <clears throat> Wolverine because uh, he he, does, he is pissed off like Batman or Iron Man, but also um, he's like a product of um, government experimentation and shit like that. And with this right. day and age, with people being just so much bigger, everyone's influenced by hormones and stuff like that, and now we have all these genetically modified foods and that. I guess it's a relevant hero because... He feels everything. He can't mm-hmm. stop feeling everything. He right. constantly is in pain, and he's a product of um, government right. tampering, augmentation in, in in his sense. No, but is he is he in pain because of the of the skeleton of the adamantium? Yeah, he's he's like in pain because he's an asshole, I guess. <laughs> but also because like. I can relate. He, he puts himself into positions. <laughs> he puts himself into positions where he's gonna hurt himself, and then he he gets shot, and his skin heals, but he still feels the shot. It's not like yeah. Superman. The bullets don't like bounce off of him. They yeah. go in. Yeah, and then they the body expels him. I, I know that. I know when the claws come out, it hurts him every single time. That I know. But in general, 
does he feel pain constantly because of the adamantium in his body, like basically replacing the skeleton or taking over the skeleton? Is Does he feel pain because of that? Does he well, uh, well, I mean, he was born with the healing factor. Um, oh, he was? Yeah, he was born with the healing factor. And, and, and according to the story, um, uh, the government, uh, the government uh, group that he was working with, Weapon X, they decided to enhance, you know, his um, his body by injecting him with adamantium, which was argu- which was the strongest metal in the Marvel universe. Mm-hmm. So that way, you know, he was not only able to heal faster, but he was practically mm-hmm. indestructible. You know, so I mean, I would imagine it would still, it would, in terms of him hurt it, hurting him, I'm sure like the process did hurt him. Because they didn't use, um, in, if you saw that, you know, that classic film, X-Men Origins Wolverine, they didn't use uh, any anesthesia on him. So yeah. he was alive when they injected him, injected the metal in his body, which I'm quite sure was really hot. And I know that couldn't have been, that couldn't have been comfortable. And then they had to, like, you know, find a way to super cool it to his uh, bones. Hey, so. hey, does he regenerate that metal? Well, it's it's unbreakable. Yeah. So. If if it were to break, would it be regenerated by him? Uh I don't think so. Uh, okay, then you might not like the ending to this movie. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for the thank you, uh, Chris. I appreciate it. Well, uh, so, how was no the uh, but how was the uh, fight between him and Silver Samurai? Was that um, worth the price of admission at the very least? Um, not for me, because, uh, you had this whole movie where you had these awesome, a- there was a lot of cool action scenes. They were at one point, uh, fighting on, uh, Wolverine and some other bad guys were fighting on top of a speeding bullet train. Right. And, um, they had to, like, jump and duck whenever, like, new poles would come out in the way. Right. Uh, and they had to hang on to the train with his blades and with the, um, the gangster's knives and stuff like that, but... Then at for the climax of the movie to be against a giant CGI character, I didn't really like that too much. Okay. <laughs> but but the one good thing they did is they constantly had a threat against him, like the um that silver uh Same whatever that thing is, it was very yeah. strong against him. So he was okay. constantly in threat. And in the middle of the movie they did this thing where his powers were getting weakened because he was being like poisoned or you you gotta see it. It it's hard to explain, but his um his powers were it was kind of like that Superman movie where Superman lost his powers. Uh huh. So in regards to him being undestructible, and if that's what your turn off is, I'd say this film doesn't put him in that light. Like he seems pretty vulnerable for most of it. Right. Okay. It opened uh, it opened domestically to fifty five million, but Which worldwide is... uh, to one forty one point one million. Wow. So yeah, I mean, it was gonna make it was gonna make its money back. It just, I just didn't think it was gonna make a lot domestically. And I mean, and uh, yeah, I guess maybe they're going to the Asian market with this. I mean, the whole thing took place basically in Japan. Right. Fast well, and the I Furious. Mean, they just said Fast and the Furious is the highest Chinese box office like ever. Which one? <laughs> really? Uh, the new, the last one, number six. Really? Hmm. Yeah. Right, so everybody and their mom is probably looking forward to uh, the last one, which is Seven. And that's going to have, I believe, Jason Statham as the main villain in that one. So that should be interesting. Do you really believe that's the last one? No. Uh, oh, gonna, no. There's no, going to be no. ten. There's going to be ten. Yeah, oh, no, no, no. Dude, that's a ca- <laughs> Chris, that's a cash cow right now, yeah. that franchise is, you know, that's a that's an entity unto itself, and it's critic-proof. You know, doesn't matter what the critics think, you know, as long as, you know, as fast cars and fast women and big action sequences, it should be all right. <laughs> why the hell do you, why the fuck do you sound like Beavis? <laughs> no, that was actually, that was actually. Uh, butthead or butthead. <laughs> Who gives a shit? You know. That was actually butthead, Brian. You butthead. The hell would there, you do? I see someone on a daily basis. <laughs> um, that looks like Beavis, and I always want to go up to him and do that butthead voice. <laughs> I know he's gonna be so offended. <laughs> or how you You're right. <laughs> well, I guess there's certain things in um that miss the mark here in America, but 
I guess at this point we have to realize that these aren't just made for Americans. This like these blockbuster yeah. movies are made to be seen by everybody on Earth if they can see it. Right. And yeah, uh, it's, it's a worldwide uh, thing, you know. So there, <laughs> I guess there's certain things that um, don't w- would like miss miss the beat here or there, but to to the gen- the mass mass mass. Uh, I guess common denominator. It, it works for everyone. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, especially out, uh, outside of the U.S. Yeah, they'll eat this up. I thought this was interesting. They um, they kept calling. This would be interesting for you, Brian. They kept calling Wolverine Ronan in this movie. No, really? why? Because why? of Ro- they were saying because uh-huh. of Ronan is a samurai with no master. Uh huh. And in the previews for this movie, they showed a Keanu Reeves movie that also play, takes place in Asia. <laughs> and it was called... Four, it the was 47 Ronin. Yeah. I, saw the, I saw the trailer. What, what's up with these um, these movies oh. where um, there's like a Japanese army that's very good at fighting, but for some reason they just can't get it together until they have the long-haired white guy help them? This, right. uh, this movie, 47 Ronin, has been in production for several years. Apparently... It's been a huge, huge mess. Really? Yeah, it's been... Things have to be reshot left and right. No one can get on the same page. So chances are this movie's going to be terrible. Really? But you never know. Yeah, yeah. It's been... It, there's been huge, huge problems with it. It's like uh, several hundred million... Not, no, wait. Don't quote me on that. But it's, right. it's, it's a lot, a lot, a lot of money. Millions upon millions over budget. It's been postponed, pushed back over a year. It just production alone, it's supposed it's a big mess. I uh, remember you know, reading this last mm-hmm. year, you know, so I don't even have any of the details now. The um, the trailer was actually one of the best trailers I saw. So I guess kudos to whoever cut that trailer because it yeah. looks pretty cool. It could be really good. I don't know. Well, I mean, what other what other trailers did you see? I mean, if that was the best one. Just out of curiosity. Uh, what other trailers did I see? Oh, there was another really good one. They didn't show the Gravity trailer, but I've been seeing that pop up online. Right. Um, whew, they showed it. The crappiest trailer I saw was probably Percy Jackson versus whoever. Oh, they still making those? Yeah. Oh. It's pretty I mean, I don't, they, only made, they only made one, but I mean, you know. It's, it's like an uneducational version of Magic School Bus or something. Uh, don't you mean Harry Potter? But okay. <laughs> yeah, it it does seem like Harry Potter. There this this um I'm trying to think of what else I saw. For, 47 Ronin Def Oh, I know what else I saw. Um The End The World's End, the new Simon Pegg movie. Okay. Oh, I saw that trailer as well. That Actually, looks it, cool. looks, it looks it looks funny. I mean, it's basically the same premise as Shaun of the Dead uh, but with robots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. So Shaun of the Dead was good, so I can't see why this, if they follow the same formula, it's just like Hangover 2. Nobody liked it because it was basically a carbon copy of Hangover 1, yeah. but it was still entertaining. It just, everybody knew what was going to happen. Right. So well, that's why. What was the deal with uh, Hot Fuzz? I remember being really hyped for that movie and then being a little disappointed. It was, well, uh, I guess, well, I guess people were waiting. They thought they were going to get another Shaun of the Dead, but that was more along the lines of a buddy cop film. Mm-hmm. And, and instead of it being like a spoof on the buddy cop film, it was like a homage uh, to the uh, genre, the subgenre, the action film. Um, but I thought it was well made and well executed. I thought Timothy Dalton in that film was hilarious. And, uh, and I say that very rarely about Timothy Dalton, <laughs> where I'm actually, you know, I like him in some certain films. Like I seen him, in um, The Rocketeer, and I saw him in uh, those James Bond films. Uh, but uh, this one actually actually made me into a fan, if you will, Hot Fuzz. Um, now, getting back to George's um, thing about the 47 Ronin, there are, there are exceptions where, you know, when films go over budget or then there's a disagreement with, you know, say, a star and a director, and like for instance, uh, this year's World War Z. Even though the, both directors didn't agree on something, like for instance, like uh, where the ending should go, that film <laughs> takes money back. So, just a little food well, for thought. 
I'm not. I'm not even sure whether there was a disagreement between Keanu Reeves or anybody. Apparently, oh, just production production was a mess, as right. far as I know. I'm still not right. sure World War Z had an ending. I was waiting for one. Right. <laughs> well, uh, apparently they figured something out over there. Well, right, and they're gonna, and I think it was supposed to be like a, they're gonna do like a continuation of that story, so we'll see what happens. Well, they don't have any letters that come after Z, though. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's we good. also saw, um, um, I, I know, George, me both saw Conjuring. Did you see Conjuring? No, but I heard good things about it. Like, it's in terms of, like, compared to the other horror films that have come out in recent memory, like, this is, like, top tier, if you will. And I think I think it has to do with even though I haven't seen it, it has to do with the acting. You know, you have um, Vera Farminga who you know could pretty much do it all. You know, in terms mm-hmm. of it doesn't matter um, what genre she's in, she's always she always gives it her all, and she's believable in no matter what role she's in. And I heard she kicks ass in um, that uh, Bates Motel um, show where she plays um, Norman Bates' mother. So, I'd, I'm not surprised that it would be anything less than good if she's in it. Let's put it that way. Yeah, it was. Um, it, let's put it this way: it was the first good horror movie in years. So I'm not sure if everyone was. It. It was everyone was excited about it and everyone was happy to see it. But I wonder if it had come out at a time when there was a lot of good horror movies coming out, how well it would have stacked up. Right. <laughs> because look, let's. But it was it was good. It was well made. Well like, like, well, like for instance, like if it came out, like say I'm just painting a scenario here. Like suppose it came out, like say when the latest entry to Saw came out. Yeah. Obviously, the the average movie goer will want to go go see Saw first before they ever saw Conjuring. You well, know, Conjuring, they might think, oh yeah, I'll just rent it. But because there, it's been a, a roughly a slow time in the movies this year. You know, people. You know, it caught people's attention at the right time. Yeah, it didn't come out on Halloween or anything like that. It came out well before that. It was, yeah. um, you know what it was? It wasn't a gore movie. It was a true ghost horror movie. And there hasn't been a good one in a long time. And you can't count Evil Dead because that's a remake. And we can't count Mama because that was a Japanese remake. Right. So in terms of American-made horror, you know... Not based off of any other remake. Then, Not based yeah. off of any other remake. <laughs> and and it was it was well made. And look, let's face it, bad horror is easy to easy to come by and it's hard to watch. Right. All you have to do is go on Netflix and just enjoy. And see if you can't fall asleep before the time some of those movies are over. You know how the beginning of how many of those movies I've seen? <laughs> I don't know what the ending is because I fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> But, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of bad scary movies, and this one was good. Um, yeah. You know, you can't help but draw the the comparisons to Amityville Horror, but uh, apparently it was the same couple that investigated both both occurrences. Well, this is so, like a, I think this is like a prequel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think well, it was. Okay. In terms of uh, horror, I was I was just for. Um, just to uh, see, just just to t- tell myself how good Conjuring was, I I watched some bad horror movies, and there was a couple things I noted. But bad I, horror I just... there if bad horror movies have like soundtracks that are not, um, that are not part of a score. They're just like a random like upbeat song for no reason in a in a scene. Right. Um, whereas, whereas, like, say, like, you want a, a decent horror film when it has like a good score, it can enhance the film for the most part. Yeah, I mean, look at any good horror film and tell me, has there ever been a song as part of the soundtrack? And I don't mean, and if they do, it's part of the room tone. Fourteen oh eight, that song was playing on the clock radio. The Shining, that that scene where uh, where um, he was in that big room and the radio was playing, that was a radio that was playing live. So there's always um, audio mixed with room tone. And that right. that that's cool because horror is always atmospheric. But when you put a soundtrack in, you cut that. You you don't focus on any more tone and you don't focus on any more score. It's just a song for the sake of being there. Like was this the fucking director's favorite song and they just had to put it in there? Right. 
<laughs> there was just little stuff like that. Like it was really well done. They had a character who was a cop who was you, if if for no no other reason you should see it because they had this cop character that was like the meathead muscle character in The Conjuring. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And when the ghost appeared to him, and the ghost like you know how ghosts will like appear to you and then like disappear behind a wall or a door. Yeah. Uh-huh. When the ghost did that to him, he was like, "Hey, come over here." And he like followed the ghost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was funny. So the acting was good. Everyone played their role, but it wasn't like over the top or gimmicky. Like it was all pretty solid and pretty fluid. And the right. the audience was the audience was in it the whole time, start to finish. Right. So they were like, so they jumped up when when need be, not need be, but like they 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 were genuinely terrified during certain scenes, and. They had a couple of like blue scares in yeah. the movie Cassie Ran. Okay. Well, because in in horror, pace is better than quality. Well, th- this movie was also high quality, but the pace oh. the pace was perfect. Pitch pitch perfect pace. Gotcha. And um, it was basically, it was it was half ghost story, and then the 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 end it kind of turned into an exorcism movie. The very end. Oh okay. And they had to perform a little exorcism. But I don't think I'm ruining anything. It's really, really good. Um, creepy, creepy ghost stuff. Uh, lots of scares and all that stuff. Mm. But, yeah, I mean, you need you need tension in a horror film. And this movie had that. Start to finish. Ten- tension, tension, tension. That's it. What do you think, George? Yeah, I agree. The movie opened up with a with a different story from a different couple, and then that story led to the introduction of the paranormal investigators. So then that led to the new haunting, which led to uh, another haunting. That's a (laughs) a haunting within a haunting. So it was like basically two mini hauntings in this movie and one big one. Oh, okay. So it was really good. Yeah, I agree with Chris. The pace was very good. And it it was entertaining. I liked it. Uh, Um... The acting was good. The story was good. Uh, the soundtrack was good. Um, the I like the the whole '70s style. I'm I'm a big '70s guy, so I I also appreciated there was a, like a watching it in the movie. You can really see that grain and I appreciate oh. the um, the '70s feel to it, where it might not feel the same watching it at home on HD. You know. Right. Now, in terms of like the uh, the victims that were terrified in the film um were they like uh for the most part i assume they were likable people for the most part like you it wasn't like another horror film where you you know you're like why the hell would i care about these particular people being terrified you know um you know you know what i'm saying like they they were they're at least likable for the most part like they were sympathetic yeah it was it was just a family it wasn't um there wasn't any over the top characters Oh, okay. it, it was just a family. It was a guy and his wife, and um, they had like four or five daughters. Like they had a lot of daughters. It was an all daughters family. Okay. Yeah, and which there I guess were... works with horror. It's always good to have a few female horror actresses, so there was plentiful. That's true. Uh, what what this movie didn't have was a um, a black person that dies first. So that that well... didn't exist in this movie. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, I wonder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there there is no uh, there was no uh, role for. I would I, I would I would die first. I would be bad, but I'll I'll, I'll I'm like whatever. Uh, <laughs> would, 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 I wonder if a black actor would rather not be included in the movie at all or die very quickly. <laughs> I would. Not, I, I, I'm leaning toward the former, <laughs> unless unless they're gonna get paid a lot, you know. <laughs> how no. many zeros in the, how many zeros in that paycheck? I all right, I'll think about it. <laughs> Put me in the movie and kill me off the first minute. I don't care. A job is a job, my friend. Right. <laughs> uh, black people are horror jobbers. <laughs> yeah. Horror jobbers. Horror 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 J players. Yeah, the uh, the ghost, the ghost that gives them a damn it leave. <laughs> you know what they're like? Uh, they're uh, it's like um, black actors wait outside of the Home Depot looking for horror roles right. for the day. Why are you comparing them to Mexicans? Do you need do you need work? Do you need do you need me to die, man? Do, do, do you want me to die? <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, but we need you to get stabbed for real. Yeah, I'll do it. That's a bad enough. That's like some like some bad Family Guy in the uh, example. Yeah, that is. Yeah, yeah, man. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's ridiculous. <laughs> Stupid. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm gonna die, man. <laughs> <laughs> and and I guess uh, walking, walking to this uh, bedroom, right? And you know he's supposed to stab me, right? Yeah. All right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna die right. in this bitch. So uh, <laughs> me and Brian, me and Brian were shooting um, a movie once that you've seen for our mutual friend George, and um, uh, this guy in the park that was part of a gang. There was supposed to be a beating up scene, and the guy in the park <gasps> was part of a gang, and he's like, "Nah, you're doing it wrong. Let me show you." <laughs> <laughs> Plug the movie. Maybe it's out there in, in cyberspace. That, that movie was called Hustle and Bustle 2. <laughs> okay, whoever's listening, watch Hustle and Bustle 2. It's, it's, a, it's, it's can, a groundbreaking. Yeah, you can find it on the on YouTube. That's for damn sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, thought you, I thought you had to pay money that's for that. The movie. filmmaker didn't take it take it down, but I sincerely doubt he took it down because well, he needs he needs the publicity. So who are we kidding? The director, the director of that movie, didn't want to have the gang member join the crew, but yeah, Brian, no, that, Brian that convinced my... him to join. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Anything to make a film more interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll, again, if I if I was you know transported back in time, I'll do it again. And next time, next time I'll see. I'll ask him if he had more friends who would be willing to join, <laughs> who were. <available. laughs> <laughs> Brian, Brian had the film completely taken over by a very opinionated gangster. Right, and he was talking about, if I remember correctly, like, you know, because he also said that he acted as well. So he was telling us stories about how he was on, like, a music video with the J-Lo and, you know, how he got a chance to, you know, bang her and all that kind of stuff. Where <laughs> We, we yeah. took with a grain. We took with a grain of salt. Yeah, <laughs> so. his words, his he, words. he he acted like a gangster that was telling you all these stories. That's exactly what he acted like. Right, exactly. So that, 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 that's that's the the extent of his acting. Right. <laughs> Red flag. Um. <laughs> Actually, I think he was wearing a blue one that day. Yeah, and his name just happened to be Blue. We, we well, he wanted us to. Credit him as blue, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, man. Yeah, oh. man. Blue, man. All right. This, conversation, this conversation's gone far. <laughs> Thanks uh, for the internet these days. We have to be careful. Yo, man, you got the internet, man? Well, uh, I mean, that was two thousand years ago. Uh, Good luck trying to trace this back. <laughs> what are the What are the over under chances of that guy's uh, living status? I don't want to take a chance on that. You can do that yourself. <laughs> yeah, but the conjuring was good. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> they, um, the, yeah, everything, even the comedy, like whatever comedy was in it, also perfectly fit the story. And Bad Horror yeah. doesn't do that. Bad Horror has a stupid joke that that's that completely suspends uh, suspension of disbelief. Right. And uh, that and that's the good thing too. Would um. With car- the cartoon movies like Disney and Pixar, they will have humor that relates to the story, whereas DreamWorks does not. Right. I, I almost saw Turbo this week in 3D because I was bored, and I had a couple hours to kill, and I walked away, and I said, thank God I walked away. Really? Like, it would really look that it really looked that bad to you? I mean, it doesn't look that bad, but I know what I'm getting. I know I'm going to be pissed off at those, um, at those um, jokes those that are specifically those... for the adults. Right. The, the, the referential jokes, like, you know, if you're not hip, then you're not going to get it type jokes. I understand. Yeah. I understand. Okay, are, we so, still making, uh, are we still making fun of Britney Spears in kids' movies? Well, where the hell did this come about? <laughs> I didn't even know what she was movies doing. Always do. No, these are these kids' movies. They always have a joke that goes over the kid's head to, like, appease the parent. But if the movie was... If the movie was had a better pitch and tone to it, you wouldn't need to do that. Everyone would be engaged. I'd right. say the, these crappy kids movies are still cracking Charlie Sheen jokes. Yeah, exactly. It's always humor about... First of all, it's completely negative to be making fun of someone who has a problem. 
Right. And second of all, it's old. It's like outdated shit. Right. See, this is the stuff they talk about on Entertainment Tonight when it's not relevant anymore. <laughs> yeah. If they're just well, waiting for the next celebrity to mess up. And yeah. Plus, movies take months to do. This, this joke was probably made two years ago. Yeah, well, with the, with the emergence of TMZ and stuff the last few years, Access Hollywood and Entertainment Tonight have taken a back seat because TMZ is live every day. They have a website. They tweet. They have Facebook. All that kind of stuff. Yeah. So now Entertainment Tonight is on for a half hour each evening. Mm-hmm. The, the, with the, the way news travels these days, all that stuff is old news by the time you're watching it at night. Right. But, but then again, I think that's geared to the same people that are taking their kids to see Turbo. So it might work. God help these, these famous people that have to deal with these crazy, uh, paparazzi, paparazzo, whatever they call, just died in, um, Beverly Hills last week, didn't he? Really? I don't, I don't know. know. Yeah, I don't know. probably speeding around wow. in the car, doing something nonsense thing. Well, who was he following? Crash. I think it was a car crash. But who was he following? You're part of the problem if you're wondering who he was following. Sue me. Um. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's there. It's a very sick thing to want yeah. to invade people's privacy and stuff like that. But don't get me wrong. All these people that are are on TMZ, they're they know what they're doing. Yeah, they want. Yeah, I see. They want to be there. Yeah, like they don't get just, don't get me wrong. It's, matter, so it's just a matter of like you know they want to be relevant and they want to you know generate buzz on whatever the hell they're doing. So they have to. They need um, something like TMZ or Entertainment Tonight and Access Hollywood. It's a it's a it's a messed up symbiotic relationship. But it's a relationship, nonetheless, that you either love it or you really hate it. You know. Yeah. And Don't get me wrong. I, if if I ever get any sort of notoriety, I mean, hang obviously. On. Hang on. Hang on. Let me knock on wood right now. All right. Keep going. Yeah, I got some wood you can knock on. Shut up. If I if all I right. ever if I ever get any sort of notoriety, of course, these people they all have publicists, and that's how it works in this town. It's a matter of getting you out there and getting people to see you. And then once people start seeing you, they start recognizing you. Once they start recognizing you, they start remembering your name. Once they start remembering your name, that's when you start becoming a household name, start meeting people, start going to different things, seeing auditions, all that kind of stuff. It's all a bunch of shit, but that's just how it works. Don't get me wrong, I'm a part of the shit. I want to be involved in the shit. So these people have these publicists, and they tell them, all right, TMZ hangs out there. TMZ hangs out there. This person's there. This person's there. Mm -hmm. And there you go. And the publicist also gives tips out to all these um, tabloids. I'd say it's a tabloid. TMZ's a tabloid, I'm assuming. So their publicists also do that. They call them up and say, hey, so-and-so is going to be there. Catch him. You know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So it's it's just a it's 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 very um, disheartening to actually see how these things happen behind the scenes and to know the mechanics of the monster. There was that's, um, Hollywood is a monster. I'm not saying that all these um, TMZ guys. Obviously, a lot of them that I saw were like younger guys. They seemed like regular kind of. Mm-hmm. But um, there was one specifically. I guess he was like independent um, paparazzi guy that was always fucking creeping me out when I was at work. He would always, like, because I worked right next to, like, a fancy uh, restaurant where I guess a lot of these guys go. Mm-hmm. And um, he was always, like, holding the door open for me to come in and out of work because he wanted, he didn't want to get thrown out for loitering. So he'd always, like, do something to pretend he was, like, helping the people in the area. But really, he was just doing that <laughs> to stick around. And I almost got into it with him because I was like, hey, I don't fucking mind, uh, excuse me, I don't mind your hustle, but... I'm not part of your hustle. Do not include me in this. This is creepy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And what, and what did he say back? Like, you know, he's like, hey, what are you talking about? And he's just like, I'm here for you, bro. Like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's, a, that's a very L.A. Uh, non, uh, yeah, non-threatening, non, non-threatening, threatening mentality. I'm not that it. fancy of a lady. I don't need the door held open for me. No, right. don't sell yourself short. You're a fancy lady. <laughs> well, I guess that's how you got to get famous. Well, other people like I don't I don't know if Hitler got famous that way, but most people 
Most oh, of them I mean, that was, that was seven years ago, dude. <laughs> Hitler? I'm sure. I mean, I'm just saying, like, you know, it was a 70, 80 years ago in terms of the way he... Hitler, no, you know, Hitler had the same publicist that Big Tobacco and now all these gas companies are hiring. <laughs> Did he? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. They, they, didn't, they didn't do such a good job. If, if Maybe Hitler's, uh, Hitler's running the... Um, Hitler's going to be the main vi- villain of Gasland 3, I think. Oh, shit. Yeah, why not? <laughs> Auschwitz. <laughs> Yeah, sure. <laughs> I'll pay to see that in movie theaters at the Angelica. Yeah, sure. Oh, shit. Oh, speaking of uh, indie theaters, I saw, um, uh, what do you call it? I saw at the New Art. Have you ever been to the New Art, George? No, where is it? The New Art's um, in West L.A. Mm-hmm. It's a little indie theater, but it's a very, very famous uh, indie theater. And I've I heard saw, of it. I saw the act of killing there. Yeah, the, the, tell me about that because the whole premise of that. Well, explain to us again what it was about and and, and tell us about it. Um, what you thought about it because the whole premise of that movie kind of uh, it's intriguing, but at the same time is 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 kind of scary when you're when you have to face certain things. I don't know where to start here. The movie was completely um, insane, ridiculous, terrifying, com- comical, um, eye opening. Disheartening. <laughs> I mean, I, every human emotion you could name, you could put at this movie. Really? Um, the movie is basically about a guy who was a killer. From uh, He killed like a thousand people. Mm-hmm. That's it? And, yeah, that was all. He just killed a thousand. And, um, no when big. He, when he gets older now, he wants to get the message out about how he killed everyone because he wants everyone to remember. Because from their point of view, he did the right thing. His point of view, he did the right thing. Uh-huh. So um, he starts to get this film crew together to talk about it. But then the film crew starts saying, why don't you shoot the scenes that you did and reenact them? So one scene was him killing. One scene was him getting killed. One scene was like an artistic interpretation of the killing. And uh-huh. the movie is completely ridiculous. But look, all right, let me start at the beginning. The movie starts with him just being interviewed about how he was um, killing. And Mm -hmm. the type of killer he was, was this movie takes place in Indonesia. And in Indonesia, they used to be um, run by the government, but they got taken over by the military in 1965. Mm -hmm. Now, there was a lot of communists in in Indonesia because of everything going on with the Cold War. So the military decided to have a death squad, and this guy was part of it. And the death squad could kill communists. They could kill Chinese, uh, nas- like Chinese um, ethnic Chinese people, and they could kill uh, intellectuals or whoever, basically whoever they wanted, whoever was a threat to that new military government going on. So the move, you know, flash forward uh, 40, 50 years later. Now the the killer is an old guy, and his the other killer, who's his sidekick, is older too, and he's like a fat, funny guy. Well, mm-hmm. I mean, f- as funny as a killer could be, but he this is like his follower, this big fat dude. So the two of them go around and talk about what the killings were like and how they're heroes for doing it. And the people in the in the news and in the street treat them kind of like heroes. It's kind of interesting. So they start um, recreating all their um, their horrific crimes, I guess, war crimes. But their point of view is, hey, we won the war. War crimes are people who lose the, lo- the war. They go, George Bush isn't in jail for war crimes right now, is he? Wow. So they recreate their crimes on camera. They show, look, look, we, we actually found a more humane way to kill. It was less messy. We would, um, we would take this chicken wire, and let me show you how we did it. And they were like very nicely showed how they strangled people with chicken wire. Yeah, but then every cool. time they would shoot one of these scenes, you know, they'd edit the scene and they'd go back and they'd show it to the guy who was the old killer. And and he would be like, no, nah, it's not right. I would never wear white pants. We got to do this again. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So no. Goes, no, this is not right. We got to do this, this, and this, and this. And, and um, his whole thing was he wasn't very educated, but he was always obsessed with the movies. And he was obsessed with... Um, uh, gangster movies and, and movies where Nazi movies and movies that had murders. So when he was young, he was in a gang, and what the gang would do was they'd buy out the rest of the tickets for a show of the movies, and then they'd just scalp the tickets outside the movie theater for a higher price. 
So he was a gangster who was obsessed with movies, and then when the military took over, they'd let him be a, a basically a killer. So he just dressed and acted like he was in a American film because that's what he loved, and he would just kill people accordingly, pretending he was Scarface and stuff like that. Oh. I thought you like you know he would be like in some suit suits. Oh, uh, you know what? Uh, Scarface didn't come out that early. He would dress like a movie gangster and and those sort of things. Yeah, he was he was dressed as a gangster. There was even scenes where he was putting on like a comical pimp hat just for the hell of it. And wow. right, like no, you're talking about like gangsters in the vein in the vein of like a James Cagney or Edward G. Robinson, like back in the 30s, or we talk the 30s or 40s, or just a gangster and like you know those. Um, but like obviously, like, um, Scarface. Um, uh, yeah, I guess kind of with the whole suit and everything. Oh, okay. Um, because I guess this was done in the 60s, so it was before Scarface and that. It was probably before, yeah, it was before Taxi Driver, but, you know. It, right, so, okay. It was, he talked a lot about how he used to watch gangster movies and war movies and um, cop and crime movies and how he idolized them and wanted to up the ante. Whatever he saw on screen, he wanted to do more of that, so. It really was telling how powerful movies could be in in or in the wrong hands. <laughs> um, so then he starts recreating the scenes, and um, and the shit starts to get to him, like because he starts playing the victim some of the times, and he starts like uh, there's a scene where he's like throwing up because of it, and there's a scene where he can't record anymore because he's just uh, sad. And I guess it's like everything comes back to haunt you sort of thing. Um, there was also a scene where it was it was his nightmare where he was laying in bed and all of a sudden someone came and they're like, you killed me, I am back. And they had him dress up as like this weird ghost. And he goes, this is what's in my nightmare. And they had it looked like a theater actor in tight like green spandex. <laughs> oh. So the whole thing was completely, there was a lot of comedy in the whole thing. And then he... Then he convinced the fat gangster, he goes, we need to have comedy if this is going to be a good movie, so you need to dress up like a woman in every scene. So this big fat guy was dressed up like a woman always. Jesus. They're like slapping his, they were like, now, and they were like, now let us show you how we um, killed a woman. And they like reenact that, and they're like smacking the fat guy in the belly. They're like, are you carrying, are you pregnant with a communist? Are you pregnant with a communist? And, what this, is a doc, and, this, and this is a And this is a doc, correct? This is Just a documentary. This oh is a man. documentary. That is ridiculous. <laughs> oh this is one of the top ten documentaries I've ever seen. Ever, ever, ever. Top ten in your okay. And um okay, so then they also recreated a couple scenes doing like violence to kids and and to to families and like they'd show how they go in and like yell at someone for being communist and kill them on the spot. And so and like take them away and and um, the kids were crying for real because they didn't realize it was acting. You know, kids kind of get lost in the mix because these guys recreating it were really the ones who did it, so they were quite good at it. And uh, the kids were like crying, but the parents, I guess the parents of the neighborhoods, were just around them clapping like great performance, great performance, like recreating the murder of like a million com uh, Chinese and communists who died there uh, years years earlier and. Um, there was even a scene in the beginning where they went around um, auditioning women in, in uh, one of the guys in the big fat guy's town to see how, how they would do when they were getting threatened for murder. And the women were like smiling a little. And he's like, nah, this is not good. We need to go to your town. Your town dealt with more of this. So, so they went to a new town just to cast uh, people who remembered the murders and could recreate them more. And they would have people who were like the descend, like the children and the uh, stepchildren of some of the people that were murdered as actors because they remembered it the most. And the, the Chinese, or the guy who was a uh, stepson of the um, Chinese guy who was killed, um, uh, he, he became one of their actors who was tortured and he did a great job. And he goes, listen, I'm not criticizing your film, but this is what it was like from my point of view as someone who had their father figure killed and taken away. And the gangsters listened to it and they're like, Hmm, that's, you know what, that's a little bit of a long story to tell. Uh, maybe we could squeeze it in at the end, but that's a very good story, and that that's good inspiration for the actors, for sure. Wow. So, it was, a, the, the movie, they, the gangsters the whole time thought they would be making a movie that would um, display to the world, but really, the filmmakers were just filming all the behind-the-scenes of them making this movie. 
And it really became bizarre when there was like dramatic interpretations. Like they did this one musical number in front of a waterfall where dead Chinese, quote unquote, dead Chinese and communists were coming up to the killer and saying, "Thank you for sending me to heaven. I was such a miserable communist on earth. You did a great thing." It was just sick. <laughs> and they had like, and he had like women dancing around him while this was all going on. It was the sickest, somehow funny, charming. It was it, you. You feel bad for watching it, and you feel bad for laughing because these guys killed lots of people. But you so also so feel bad that you're supporting them and getting famous in the process. It it really gut wrenches you. So it was yeah. a funny stuff film then. It was it was every emo- It was funny. It was heartbreaking. It was fucking terrifying, scary. Uh, it was everything. I can- This is one of the most profound things I've ever seen. Hmm. And it shows, like, you know, if you live in some of these, some of these countries, you know, we want to, everyone, we want everyone to be Americanized, but some of these places interpret that in all different sorts of ways. Right. That's the reason that um, people in the Pacific Islands eat spam and love it and consider it a delicacy. <laughs> it's an American thing, but it's not the American dream. Well, <laughs> I think it's because there's lack of a better option. <laughs> yeah. Well, th- well, this country, it was kind of like. Um, Gangsters had overrun the, the political structure, and they even showed the the vice president of the country hold at a rally where he's like, "If if everyone was a bureaucrat and a politician like the communists, we'd never get anything done." That's why we're happy that the gangsters are are free men and do what they need to do, and and sometimes beat someone up because sometimes people need a beating. And that is true. And they that showed true. they showed the gangsters going around to to people and and extorting them for money. And every gangster they went to, every um, shopkeeper they went to, they're like, you know, if it was anyone but you, I'd break their legs. But come on, buddy, give me a couple dollars. <laughs> it was. And and then the fat the big fat gangster that was constantly dressed up as a woman, someone gives him a call to run for parliament. This is no bullshit. Uh-huh. This is all part of the documentary. So he starts driving around in the street in a car trying to run for parliament, and he's blatantly saying that the reason he wants to run for parliament is so that he could extort people for bigger amounts of money. Instead of just for a couple dollars, he could get someone for ten grand for a building code violation. <laughs> wow. So, but he has no political platform to run on because he doesn't believe in any ideal. So he doesn't know what to say. So they have him riding around in a car with a megaphone and telling him, stand up and look politician-like, and he's like too lazy to stand up, so he's just sitting in the car, and on the megaphone he's saying, I am Herman. I am Herman. <laughs> that's that's uh, insane. I'm telling you, it was fucking bizarre. Excuse my now, is, now, this is playing now? This oh, just okay. came out. I mean, I think, you know what, it's, it's, this is from like Denmark, Norway, and Britain. I think it's like an international film crew. Uh, I think it was out in 2010 or so, but it just got here. Oh, okay. I, just, I guess it picked up steam or whatever. But um, the one other crazy thing is that credits were mo- were like half anonymous. Like it said, line producer anonymous, anonymous, uh, oh. executive whatever anonymous. Like it nobody like, will right because nobody wants their name attached to something that heinous. Yeah, even anybody. even the girls who were dancing and stuff like that, anonymous, anonymous. Everything was anonymous. Right. So I guess they're not trying to. Um, you know, get their project on the Academy Award category for a best uh, uh, feature-length documentary. I think it will. I think it might win Documentary of the Year. Because you, you know what, the, the, the film crew, like from England or from Denmark or wherever, they had their names on it. Like the director's name was there. Oh, okay. But a lot of the, like, um, day-to-day workers on the film didn't want their name associated with it because, I mean, yeah, they were in the thick of it with, like, fucking hardcore killers and gangsters mm-hmm. it was incredible wow so you, so you think it'll, it might pick up a nomination but not the win I think you? it could pick up the win really wait are you talking best picture or best documentary no best documentary oh yeah, of course, yeah I mean this is one of the best documentaries I've ever seen okay I mean I can't even think of too many better ones hmm I, I, and and because it is like a social experiment, it wasn't just a documentary. It be, it it started off. It was 
it was kind of like Gasland in that it started off with point and shoot and then got into something much bigger, but instead of getting bigger on a political scale, it got bigger on an artistic and creative scale. So <laughs> you had these guys that were like killers that wanted to show off their artsy and creative and um, fun side. It was completely bizarre because it goes against everything that, a, I guess, a tough guy would be. And right. also the fact that their their propaganda put out the fact that the communists were the violent ones. So just by making the film, they're coming out and saying, no, we did all these killings, we, we put out the false propaganda, and we're proud of it. Jeez. Yeah. Uh, well, <clears throat> that was. I suggest you go see it. It was called The Act of Killing, and I, I've never seen anything like that ever. Oh, okay. I don't think I'm up for that, to be honest with you. Ah. Uh. Well, yeah. I mean, worst case, worst comes to worst, there's always an HBO documentary. <laughs> oh yeah, let's let's. Uh, I didn't mean to. But I mean, I'm just I'm just gonna be honest with you that you know compared to you know what you told me, this one is actually pretty tamed. You know, it's just based. It's just a documentary on one murder that took place in '07. Uh, what what movie? Ch is this? It's called the Cheshire Murders, and it's. Um, it's about the the, the murder uh, torture case that was uh, out in Connecticut. Um, it happened in Jul on July, uh, so July of '07, where um, a family uh, during the evening, I believe, uh, they were they were the f the the mother and the daughters were going out shopping, and apparently they were being tailed by these uh, criminals, these two guys who um, basically took them hostage. Um, bound and gagged the daughters, and they forced the mother to take out fifteen thousand uh, dollars and out of her bank account. Terrible. And um, also, the father was home at, uh, during this time, but they uh, I think they bludgeoned him. He, he was still alive, but he was bloodied up, and they 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 left him in the basement, and he was tied somewhere. And um, it was one of them decided to come up with the idea that like, instead of like just robbing them that they're going to rob them and uh, uh, what's that point you broke up uh, what were you saying they're going to rob them and what they're going to um, not they were just the initial plan by these two uh, criminals was to rob them they're going to rob these uh, rob the family mm -hmm. but instead somehow so, somewhere along the line one of them came up with the idea of uh, you know sexual sexually assaulting the the women of the family and mm -hmm. tying them and also and also burning them um so the the after the um mother what? took out yeah i know the mother took out the $15,000 for them they went back to to the house uh she was strangled to death they uh one of them performed sexual acts on her and they poured gasoline on the mother and the two daughters <clears throat> and um basically they were um the two daughters were burned alive mm. and uh, and also the mother was also burned alive and basically <clears throat> the father somehow escaped and he went to a neighbor to um to use the phone to call the police and um Basically, the, the 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 perpetrators basically didn't get that far. They used the the family car, and they were ca they were caught within an hour afterwards. It took it was in, within the span of seven hours that this whole thing took place. In so, and yeah, so the, doc uh, the yeah. documentary just basically um, shows archive footages from various uh, news sources. Um, Interviews with the the prosecution, the prosecutor, and the, the the defense in terms of the the defense attorney was basically saying how he was trying to get them life imprisonment, but instead the jury, which is made of up of twelve people, you know, decided that they should be executed. So, so they right now they they're on death row. The two. Um, the two uh, convicts. Wasn't there some controversy surrounding this, like um, the police work or something like that? Um, are you, in terms of what, like uh, um, paperwork not being processed, or what, was there some sort of uh, controversy that went around the? Um, I could be wrong. Right. Well, I right. mean, in terms of like them trying to get get them executed, then I think that's that's the possibility. Okay. 
Well, see, it's never good, uh, just like with active killing, never good when murderers start getting creative ideas. <laughs> right. Doesn't but in, in, anyway. but in, the, in the case of, like, the, the murderers in this piece, um, they... They wanted, you know, they wanted the death penalty because they don't want to. They don't want to live in car, incarceration like with those uh, nightmares every day of their their, their life. In, in their in their opinions, they're actually happy that they're getting they're getting executed. But um, right now, there's some. It's take. It's going to take a while for for them to um, for them to be executed because like it's it's so expensive. So if and, you think this is tame, Brian, you're fucked up. Well, you have to understand. I know it's. Uh, well, I mean tame by in terms of, like the number of people that were killed. I mean it's 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 heinous, yes. But I mean the the guys that Chris was talking about, you know, killed like a thousand people. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, he was a he I, was a, a general, a war general that killed thousands of people. These guys are sick fucks. But um. Yeah. Uh, Brian, what um, did, did they have any interviews with the criminals? Like, what were they saying? This is no, and that's, and that's uh, but that's the the, the one of the uh, like, I mean, I hate to say it's the, the negative aspect of the of the piece that they didn't really interview the uh, criminals. They just interviewed the, the 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 defense attorneys and all that kind of stuff in terms of what their clients wanted. Um, I then then they show like footages of the. Of the weapons of choice, and 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 um, also, I guess to strengthen your argument, George, in terms of how sick it was, that they actually took pictures of um, of the victims what? Um, during dur- before they burned them alive and all that kind of stuff. So that's sick. I know. What? So the father's still alive? Yeah, the father's still alive, and uh, right now he he set he set up a foundation um, in memory of, of of his wife and, and his two girls, and now at somehow he easily was able to move on with his life. I wouldn't say easily, but I mean, right now he's married to another woman, and he he's uh, started a new life, if you will. Jesus, that's I know. terrible. Well, and and and. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, what and who, who are these judges that let these home invasion guys off or let the home invasion guys sue the family for a broken leg? <laughs> <laughs> these are, <laughs> this is very ridiculous. Seems like an right. open I mean, it's not, case. It's not, like these, it's not like these guys got off. I mean, they're right now they're on death row, so. You know. Yeah, I mean, I guess as they should be, but remember those yeah. stories that were saying um, these guys were getting off or suing, suing the family because they didn't execute the crime properly. <laughs> Do you remember that? It was a couple of years ago. Right. And this is the same case or is it a different case? There was no, there was different cases where like a robber would be like um on a rooftop and fall through the roof and then he would sue that homeowner for not having a a very secure roof. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna do that. I mean, what is, <laughs> you gotta have to be a sociopath to do this sort of crime. It's a stupid thing to do. Right. You're doing nothing but leaving evidence. Mm-hmm. You're leaving evidence in every form and fashion. Right. And, you know, it's just it's amazing how back in the day, you know, cases were few and far between. You didn't hear a lot of stuff like this. I mean, in terms of, like, you know, slips and falls. But when you have, like, now it's, nowadays you, have, you hear about people who are breaking and entering, and then they hurt, they're hurting themselves in someone else's property, and they're suing the homeowner. Yeah, because Americans are out of shape. Our robbers are out of shape. Yeah. Obesity at its finest reminds me of that. <laughs> obesity, t- obesity running through the robber community. <laughs> Why does that? It actually does <laughs> remind me. It reminds me of, like, I think there was a documentary out about um, obesity in America, and um, I don't know if it was you or a friend of mine they were telling me about uh, one they were watching this doc that the problem with the military, you know, the, the, re, the, the thing that was a hurdle for the recruits was obesity, you know. In, the recruits in, of what? Of the army? In the army, in the military, you know, in a sense, like, you know, it wasn't so much people, like, you know, saying no to them, but it was the fact that, you know, they couldn't, like, you know, <laughs> they couldn't allow these people to join because they were so fat. Well, that happened to me once, actually. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I took the heart. I took the <laughs> You took the heart? <laughs> I, took the, uh, I took the army test. 
Okay. And I took it with someone who got a, like a 40% out of 100. Okay. And they were like, yeah, you could join. <laughs> I got a 97, wait, wait. I got a 97 out of 100 and they're like, you you need to lose 30 pounds. Yeah, they don't take you they, if you're if you're severely out of shape. They don't take you because it's not. They don't want to have to deal with getting people in shape. Yeah, you know, they want they want you serviceable. Yeah, they need to be able to train you in two weeks, not make you lose twenty pounds in two weeks. Yeah. Right. So right, if sir. you if you can sign up, but then you have to be like, um, you have to have a commitment, or or it, you might have to like check in with them, make sure you're losing weight or something. Right. Yeah, they send your ass yeah. to Jenny Craig or something. And I said, "Fuck that! Right, we, can't have, we can't have skinny Americans." <laughs> I, got, I got some In and Out Burger after that. <laughs> oh man, yeah. I have to, yeah. I have to try anyone? that new monkey style. Monkey. You don't, you don't have In and Out Burger out there, Brian, huh? No, we oh, have. It's only checkers. regional thing. What's that? Oh, we have, we have checkers. <laughs> no, that's fast food. That's like way fast food. But you have Five Guys Burgers. In and Out Burgers like Five Guys Burgers. Oh, I, I, I still think In and Out is hands down the best fast food burger you can buy. Hands down. I agree. And, uh, and I've been there. It's been three years as a matter. Yeah. The taste still stays with you. Let's put it that way. Yeah. And I think my colon is still messed up courtesy of In and Out Burger. So. It, it is heavy. Yeah. You, you can't have plans <laughs> to do anything after that. What are you talking about? It, it's not. It's not that bad. When you eat the four stack burger with the milkshake, it is bad. No, well, yeah. If you eat the milkshake and all the cheese on the fries and all that kind of stuff, yeah, that's bad. But you got to go in there the smart way. Get two double stacks, uh, protein style. With the lettuce wrapped around. Lettuce wrap, onion and tomato. Boom, and then you you're full and you feel nice. Yeah, I don't ever feel nice after I leave there. But then again, I'm not making wise choices when I'm there. The other no, you go in there and you get a vanilla shake and then you fill it up with root beer afterwards. And then and then sometimes they forgot they gave me the first vanilla shake and they offered me a second. Yeah, because you just inhale it. <laughs> the, uh, the other day I woke up and I felt really good. And I'm like, man, I feel great. I was going to work and I was like, you know what? I feel so good before work. I'm going to stop at In-N-Out Burger. <laughs> and I was at work, and I didn't feel so good after that. Wow. I mean, it is good, but I had way too much. Oh, okay. And then I think my body was focused on shutting down instead of being productive. Gotcha. Uh, but yeah. but uh, everything I hear about that company, I like. Like, they pay their workers good. They take holidays off. Um, oh. They're very well run. They have like so they sick. almost have, like, an army system of management. Like, you become an ensign, and then you become, like, an E1, E2, E3. And until right. you get to the top, top of the level, you cannot touch the burgers. So you do every other job before touching the burgers in that place. Right. That sounds terrible. <laughs> Why? I mean, I wait tables for a living. I don't want to work up to having to work the grill, <laughs> if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I know, yeah, I know, because you're more greasy and stink when you get home. I mean, it's more money, I'm, uh, I'm yeah, sure, yeah, than, than, than working the register or peeling the fry, the potatoes. But, um, I mean, if you're working a fast food job, you can probably wait tables somewhere if you can find the job waiting tables and make more money. I mean, it took me a while. When I started looking for jobs, I was looking for about a month straight out here mm. before I finally found a diner gig. And it was just like, oh, home away from home. I just had a gyro today. Is, is any good out here? I haven't had, like, a legit gyro out here. It's okay. I mean, it's hard to tell. It's hard to grade the quality of that gyro meat. It's also pressed together. Yeah, because every Greek place that I see out here is somehow like Middle Eastern infused. You know? uh, yeah, this was actually a chain store, so this might be corporate infused. Uh huh. All right. Never mind then. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So hey, Brian, what is that movie worth seeing? That Cheshire. Um. It's, I mean, it's okay, but it's not like you know compelling. I mean, it's a it's a messed up story. Don't get me wrong, but I felt like I was watching like a lengthier version or something from CNN. To be honest with you, you know, like a forensic of, forensics of, files or something. Yeah, yeah, like you know, in terms of like the story and the structure, you know, um, I would like I said I would have liked to have heard you know from 
you know, the convicts, you know, if they could, if they got like an interview from them, like, and asked them what the hell they were thinking at that time, you know, I think it would have made it more interesting. They did, um, interview the victims, uh, you know, family members and all that, Mm -hmm. but, you know, it it was, I mean, I felt sorry for them, but it wasn't, like, I wasn't compelled to hear from them, to be honest with you. Maybe I'm just nihilistic in that regard, but. There's certain, like, criminals that are politically motivated, and then you just have these complete sociopaths. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. They just, they just, they just can't adjust themselves to society. Wait, so it costs more money to kill someone than to keep them alive? <laughs> no. It can't. No way. What is it? The electricity bill would be too high? No, no yeah, I guess can't that. We do, uh, and, no, can no, we no. Do but in this case, is in this case, in in the state of Connecticut, it's lethal injection. What is um, it? The toxin? What do they get it on the black market? Is it a very high price for the toxin? <laughs> <laughs> what is it? I have no idea. I mean, I don't know why it would take them so long just to to kill them. You know, kill. We need to go times. to the Andes Mountain and find a goat whose urine ferments for thirty years and. Right. <laughs> just, put some, just put some Windex in the in the thing and shoot him up. No, that'll make you stronger. Windex is good. Don't we put dogs to sleep on a regular basis? With Windex? Yeah. Windex makes you stronger? <laughs> you can attest. Now, can you attest to that, George? Um, Shit, you yeah. Sure? That Windex made his teeth white. Are you kidding me? I Sometimes I bathe in Windex. Don't tell me that. <laughs> I was, if I, I, was, if I wake I up late, if I wake uh, up late for work, I just, just squirt some in my hair uh, under my armpits, my crotch. I'm good to go. I'm fucking shiny. You do? You have a squeegee man there wiping it off you? Uh, whatever girl is spending the night does that for me. Uh. <laughs> One time, I well for a while I was gargling with um with hydrogen peroxide. Yeah, ugh, oh, you're not supposed to gargle with it. You're supposed <laughs> to like. You're supposed to take like a like two capfuls and like swish it around your mouth a little. <laughs> yeah, I was I was gargling with it and then um, Jesus. by mistake I swallowed it and I went on the internet and I and I typed uh, what will happen if you swallow hydrogen peroxide and you know those Yahoo answers where they choose the best answer. Yeah, yeah. It said best answer you will die. <laughs> so freaked out. I woke up. Um, I woke up our our mutual friend who I was living with at the time, and um, I said, help, I swallowed the uh, hydrogen peroxide, and he's like, you fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I know it was wrong, I realize that now, but help. So we called poison control, and they said you have to drink like a whole thing of it. You can, If you just drank a gulp of it, you'll probably be okay. And here, yeah, here I would have. assume so. It's it's not like sulfuric acid or whatever. I mean, hydrogen peroxide, you, you put it on... On your body, so ingesting a tiny bit of it probably won't hurt you. Well, because it kills germs, so if you and your stomach and all your insides are made of germs, so I guess it's like messes up your insides if you down a lot of that. Not made of germs. There's antibodies. There's white blood cells that fight disease and all that and what. But we're not made of germs. I'm made of germs. That I know. You you're made of germs. You're the germ you're a to- man. You're a toxic avenger, pal. Why <laughs> the adventure part? Hey, uh, real quick before we go, do you want to get into some new stuff that happened this week? Yeah. You want to go, George, or me, or um, Brian? Or? Let's do it. Lead the way. Oh yeah. Okay. Let's see. Biggest news story. Well, it depends on where in the world you are, but I guess the biggest American news story is they caught that fucking talking about sociopaths. They caught. They gave Ariel Castro, who kidnapped those three girls. Like wife in prison, something like that. They give him a life plus a thousand years. Oh, that's all right. All right, he'll get out soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. That's good. Yeah, happen. he actually was pleading on behalf of. He, well, uh, I don't know if you saw it, but he was like, um, "I just want to say that um, the reason I did this crazy pornography and sexual things is because I was a victim too when I was young." And the <laughs> judge is like, "Okay, well." Well, you tell that to the person who's sentencing you, because uh, I guess this is like a pre-sentencing or something. Mm-hmm. But it's kind of crazy how like this guy, it, this guy just always acts calm and nice, but he is a sick, <laughs> kidnapping, raping, murdering guy. 
Uh, anyway, yeah. yeah, he got the book thrown. He's like, I knew that they would throw the book at me. He was saying to the judge. Right. Like, yeah, no shit. Yeah, what did he think was going to happen? He was trying to get um, an insanity plea at first. He was walking around his jail cell naked, but, you know, everyone figured out this guy is in jail for manipulation, so don't be manipulated by him. Right. <laughs> uh, but he was also on death watch for a while, um, and then he took the he took the plea bargain because he didn't want the death penalty, and, and they didn't... The uh, the victims, I guess, are relieved because they didn't want the thing to go to trial. So that's it. That tri- that would have been the most ridiculous trial ever. Mm-hmm. So so that's it. I guess that's the end of the story. He got a thousand years in jail, whatever that yeah, means. So going to trial. if we find a way to live forever and somehow decide to make him live forever out of all humans on Earth, he'll still be in jail in a thousand years. <laughs> yeah. um, Jeez, forget about it. A hey, real quick entertainment news: uh, Sam Simon's passing away. Yeah, Ooh. he's slowly one of the creators of The Simpsons. What's wrong with him? Yeah. Well, he's terminally ill, and now he's given away all his fortune. Uh, Some I checked. Who to who? All various charity organizations. You know, not me, obviously. So. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder if uh, I contact him. If he could help a brother out, you know, uh, a fellow artist. Say, yeah. hey, Sam, I know, you know, you're very, you've been very successful. You, you're, you have, you know, you stepped away from The Simpsons in 93, but you still have uh, an executive producer. <laughs> you're gonna, are you gonna read you him know? his Wikipedia info? Yeah, I say, I'm a big, I'm a big fan of yours. I know you were born on May 16th. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I, I love I <laughs> love your your foundations. I love your contributions, and I was just wondering if you could make a contribution to the uh, George is broke as a joke fund. <laughs> I'll give I'll give him the address. You know Hollywood um, <laughs> cash check money order. I'll even take a credit card swipe if that's what you want to give me. But um, <laughs> I'll take a gift card. I'll take a, uh, take a ten thousand dollar gift card. Okay. <laughs> I'll work with you. I will work with you, Sam Simon. I'm sorry that you are passing, but <laughs> you know, I'm sorry this had to happen. Are you gonna do? It, it, you know what you'll do? You'll be like Robin Hood. You'll kiss his rings, and and the jewels will come in your mouth mysteriously. <laughs> hey, that works. That works. <laughs> Stop! Um, stop hissing in my ear. <laughs> hiss, but, yeah. You have hiss your last hiss. <laughs> <laughs> but but basically he's dying. He he's dying slowly and he's giving away his uh Mother. his fortunes to all these charities. So, I have a dirty thumb. <laughs> Um, so he um, he's giving away all his fortune. He doesn't have any kids. Uh, I wonder what his situation with his is with the rest of his family. Because I mean, if I was rich and I was dying, yeah, I would help out whatever charities I like. But I would also give some to my family, help them out. Uh, apparently, he doesn't have any close family, so I leave everything to my Labrador Retriever. <laughs> It has happened before. It has happened. You know, yeah. when somebody rich actually just left it all to their freaking pet and then they give the family anything. Yeah. yeah. How yeah. how how is that even how is that even legally possible? How can you give possession of something to an animal? I guess right. you have to pay like I guess their their vet bills and everything would just be paid for forever and they're pampering and playing and Mm-hmm. I mean, how long after the person dies? Maybe a month would it take for all those people involved to just walk their separate way? Yeah, I mean uh, uh, that I don't get. But those are those are rich people problems. Clearly. So well, the the interesting thing with Sam Simon is, um, well, he created the system Simpsons, but he's been off the show for so long, but he still collects mega residuals on the show, and plus he still had the. Um, the executive producer credit, so he still was making money off everything ever made for The Simpsons. 
Oh, yeah. So he's rich forever, and he hasn't even worked in the last 20 years. The Simpsons debuted when? 80... Well, 89? No, it, it depends, because they started on the Tracy Ullman show, but the first um, actual episodes of The Simpsons might have been 87 or 88. Yeah. So basically, he was on that show for seven years, let's say, six, seven years. Yeah, well, and that's not bad. And those were the best years of that show. Yeah. That, that was good. They're actually planning on doing a uh, Simpsons and Family Guy crossover episode this season. Of course they are. And apparently it's generating a lot of buzz. People are excited about it. Um, am I going to see it? Probably not. Uh, I But I would. I'd see it. it well, hopefully Family Guy can shoot some life into The Simpsons. Uh, the Simpsons, they've been, they've been doing it for like 25 years, man. Uh... People, I don't know if there's a new generation that watches it, because I don't really hear people <laughs> talking about it. Yeah, they just have that consistent five rating. All right. That's, uh, if it's a five, I mean, that's fu- That's good. Speaking of five ratings that Fox canceled, um, Firefly is, it was in the news this week. Why? What, what's up with that? Uh, so, you know, they made the movie as a to kind of... Uh, Serenity, which yeah, is years ago. Kind of like a bone throw. Anyway, they're coming out with a mobile game. Fox licensed the mobile game for Android and iPhone. Really? It's going to be an online, um, like a Star Wars, Star Trek online sort of thing, but it's Firefly Online. And I think it comes out next year. Hmm. Yeah, that, sh- that should, you know, you know, whet people's appetite. Yeah, this this whole this is like a completely disenfranchised um, fan base that just gets thrown a bone once in a while. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, 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 it was the best. It was a great show. Here you go. Shut yeah. up. <laughs> Ameri- uh, I've never hey, seen it, so I can't comment on Ameri- it. America's Next Top Model Season 18 is on. Shut up now. <laughs> Here's your stupid Android game. You're right. Fools. By, by the way, get, uh, quick question for you guys. Do you know anybody who owns a, a Nielsen box or a box that has a Nielsen on it? Were you trying to get, like, um, a legal porn box or something? No, I just want to know who the hell's watching The Simpsons still. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know how those things work. Oh. I don't know. Maybe, you know, you know. but think of back when you were a kid, it was Sunday night, you didn't want to go to school, and there were some shows on right before you had to go to bed, so. Yeah. I guess that that's was, the audience at this point. That was awesome. Like, at the same time, there was good shows on Sunday night, but you knew... That you had school the next morning, so it was such a bittersweet feeling. <laughs> yeah. It was the worst. Like like Friday nights when you had TGIF, mm-hmm. that was awesome. You're like, all right, school is done. Friday night, watching TV, wake up in the morning on Saturday, eat breakfast, watch cartoons, and then the weekend is mine. And then before you know it... <laughs> <laughs> it sounded like you were like a commercial for a TGIF. I'm telling you, and then Sunday night before you knew it, you figured Friday afternoon, you figured, <laughs> oh man, this weekend is going to last me a long time. Then Sunday night, and then, Sunday you, were, night and then you probably got punished early Saturday morning. Yeah, I usually did. But um, Sunday night comes, and then your shows are done, and then it's just like, oh no, I didn't do any of my homework. <laughs> this, is, this is bullshit. I have to wake up in the morning, and of course those Sunday nights you couldn't go to sleep. Right. So you're 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 awake until like two, three in the morning, four in the morning. Like, oh damn it, there's school tomorrow. I guess that's everyone's mom's fault on Friday for saying, "Okay, you can watch Urkel if you do your homework first thing in the morning." I know. Hey, by the way, have you ever spoken to anyone outside of our generation about Steve Urkel show or Family Matters? They hate that Steve. show. They think it's the worst, corniest thing ever. Oh, really? I mean, if that if that's the case, then they haven't seen House of Pain. Then okay, yeah, no, everyone agrees on that. But in terms of uh, generational like um, gaps, mm-hmm. it seems like people that are outside of relate or older than us completely hate Family Matters and think it's mm-hmm. the stupidest, corniest show ever. My dad loved it. My dad still loves it. I used to watch it with my grandma. We always enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah it was great. I mean, of course, it was corny. All those '90s shows were corny. Full House. Uh, family right. matters. Uh, well, I can I can understand the older generation not liking it just because it was just it was just way too syrupy for them. I mean, they 
grew up with like all in the family and, and yeah. good times and and the Jeffersons. So I mean, you remember like the seventies was almost like a golden age for television. That when the nineties came along, it was like what what is this? <laughs> What's all? I mean, you know, you got this black family and you got this like super black nerd who's a, who's able to build these inventions yet he's so super nerdy and yet the kids love him and they don't quite get it you know it's like how did this happen yeah it was just something that caught on because the, the show didn't originally revolve around Urkel he was just a gimmick side character yeah exactly <laughs> You're right. I still think Carl Winslow is the best character no oh, Urkel, no. Urkel was the main character he wasn't no, at first. No, he wasn't at first. Oh, at he, first. Was, oh, yeah, that's true. Okay, you're right, you're right. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it was just basically the family, and then somehow they brought him in as a guest as a guest star. What and, family will let Steve Urkel destroy their house on a weekly basis? And how is Urkel always considered right for doing so? That's terrible. I know, I know. Because Carl would get pissed and everyone would feel bad uh, for Urkel. So Carl would get so pissed that everyone get pissed at Carl for getting pissed in the first place. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then everyone would just let Steve yeah. back in the house. It was Even like, though he was trying to bang their daughter. <laughs> it, was, it was like that, it was, yeah, it was that suspense thriller movie where no one believes you and everyone's against you. That was like Carl's life. Right. Yeah, I feel I feel like that sometimes. Brian, can you do the uh, can you do the Carl Winslow voice? What do, you, what do you mean, do the Carl Winslow voice? I know you know how to do it. What do you... <laughs> Steve, come in here. You're like, you can do shit like that, you know? <laughs> like, whenever, whenever Steve, like, broke something, like, come here, Steve. And he's like, uh-uh. Yeah, come here. Like, and obviously he's going to kill him, you know, near the end of the show. But he never would. Like, um, yeah, I just want to talk to you. I just want to talk to you. Come yeah, on. exactly. <laughs> Oh, man. But the bet, my favorite scene of that whole series is also my dad's favorite scene, and, and I've seen it. I've showed it to you, Chris. Uh, you probably remember it as well, Brian. With uh, when Steve got his car, oh, that was the best. That little BMW, that oh, tiny, that, that tiny little clown Volkswagen piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, it was actually a BMW. That little clown oh, car BMW that opened from oh, the front. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then he crashed into the garage, and Carl freaked out. <laughs> <laughs> three, two, one, one, two, three. What the hell is bothering me? You, Steve. You. <laughs> that was on YouTube for a while, but they took it down. Unfortunately, I would watch that every so often, and I would just laugh uncontrollably. Steve Hurkle's parents like were never involved. <laughs> no, they were never involved. Like you always talk, and they were always off screen. They were. They were always... never shown, were they? They never. They were never. No, they shown. were never. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, um, this this is something. What's to it? Be back. This is What's something uh, Steve Urkel would like. There was some. There's a couple Star Wars news out to, uh, this week. Yes. Huh? It says uh, John William, John Williams is going to be doing the composing for the uh, film. Yeah, that's. I mean, that makes sense. Yeah, that's they, those movies are going to be good. Those new Star Wars movies. They're not going to be like those. How, people. Do you, how, how do you know that? I mean, they're not bringing back Lando, even though that has nothing to do with whether or not it's going to be good or not. But. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just there's know. No, I mean, there's no way that Disney is. There's there will be no comparison. Disney will be making a movie for the purposes of entertainment. They're going to scrutinize right. every detail of it. They're going to make sure everything's pitch perfect. There will be no, 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 no person in charge that's just doing whatever nerdy thing they want and everyone agreeing with it in the moment. There will be no person in, involved like George Lucas was involved with that. And that, and I think the result will be good. It'll still play to dem, it'll still play to demographics. It'll make a lot of money, but it'll be a good, watchable, enjoyable product. Now, now just to backtrack, JJ Abrams is still directing this. That's the last I heard. Yeah, and again, he, that's an, that's going to be a good it's going to be a good movie. Oh boy, I mean, great. They should just redo the prequel. Oh, and and speaking of, uh, you know how it was always weird that the prequels like took place, and then there was still a twenty year gap beforehand before the uh, original three movies. I mean, it it don't, like don't you think that the prequels should have been closer in terms of time than the other three? Like, shouldn't episode three have been the first prequel and then have there be two other ones that were action-packed in between A New Hope? 
so between Revenge of the Sith and New Hope. Yeah, Revenge of the Sith was the should have been the first prequel. Like it, okay. Oh, I see what you're saying. So, yeah, so that should have been the first one, and they should have done something, like, with just Darth Vader and the Empire, like, you know, usurping, like, I mean, or taking over the galaxy slowly but surely. Yeah, so. that's what everyone wanted to see. No one cared. Clone Wars? What the fuck is that? Clone Wars was was one line of dialogue from A New Hope. Obi-Wan said, <laughs> he fought with me in the Clone Wars. That was such a throwaway sci-fi line. All right. He was a... He was a he was a great pilot and a good friend. <laughs> yeah, and and they made, uh, they made, not only did they make a movie called the Clone Wars, they made a cartoon series called the Clone Wars, and no one cared about it because you're fighting robots. There wasn't right. even robots in the new ones. Why would you have more advanced so, technology? Yeah, it, it was basically like Star Wars in the vein of Battlestar Galactica, basically. <laughs> I guess so. so I'm, I'm just saying, you know. And you know what it was? Every time it got a little better. Every one of those prequels got a little better. So you're constantly saying, oh, it's better than the last one. (laughs) (laughs) They were still, as a whole, pretty nuts. The third one was okay. The action was good. The the dialogue was a bit weak with Natalie Portman. And um, to none of their their fault. That was just weak, weird, weak dialogue. Dialogue, right. Well, he's never, he was, uh, Lucas was never known for writing, you know, Shakespearean dialogue. So, I mean. You know what it was though in those pre- the prequels they almost ex- and they almost accepted they're like oh it's a soap opera you could say whatever you want yeah but I mean the the fourth fourth through sixth didn't suck even though they had that kind of like soap opera dialogue and all that but then again you had you had Han Solo so you know Han Solo kind of made kind of grounded the uh, the the space opera into making it worthwhile watching. <clears throat> Yeah, that was the thing. They didn't have their oh, there there's this guy called uh, Red Letter Media. Brian, you would love this. George, you would like this too, actually. Uh huh. There's this guy called, on YouTube called Red Letter Media, and he did a set like a hour long review of Star Wars Episode One and Episode Two. Mm. And he just <laughs> he he analyzes it from every corner. It's a, his humor is a bit weird. You might like it or not like it, but the points he makes are very interesting. And uh, any, anyway, I think the new ones will be good. But in terms of bridging that gap between episode three and four, uh, between the prequels and the and the originals, um, they're they're going to be a new Cartoon Network show. Really? Did you hear about that? No, no I didn't know that. It's going to be called Star Wars Rebels. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. I read about that. It's going to sort of like link everything together, right? Yeah, they just released the concept art. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's what everyone's been wanting to see. That was actually Star Wars. No one wants to see what happened before Star Wars where there was a political, like a Senate. Mm-hmm. How do you make a movie starring a little kid but most of the scenes have have to do with a political Senate meeting? Yeah, I, I was just never into Star Wars. I saw the, the, the original three um, just a few months ago with Chris. And I'm just not a Star Wars man myself. <laughs> so you're a Star Trek fan? No, I didn't like Star Trek either. You might like Firefly, actually. I could. I, I possibly can like it. Firefly is like an edgy western sort of take on space stuff. No, oh. that that would be interesting. I'm not a fan of the whole that genre, the Star Trek, Star Wars genre. The what only is, yeah. the only outer space genres I like are along the lines of Alien and Prometheus and those two things where you go out to find. Life and something terrible happens. Uh, <laughs> oh, you're so negative. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm intrigued, man. That's one of the only. That's one of the only things that intrigues me right. about space. You know, you know, you know what it other is. Thing. Yeah, I feel. I, I understand because, in a way, I feel like Star Wars. Do you, Wars, Brian? Do you understand? I don't think. I'm about to, let me let me explain. Uh, Star Wars and Star Trek, they kind of re- represent like the white collar version of space. You know, mm-hmm. where it's like. Everything's, I mean, kind of almost too pretty looking and Art Deco-ish, whereas with, you know, you know, the Alien franchise is very blue collar and messy and disgusting and you almost feel like, yeah, I, I feel like space would be mostly like that when, you know, we go into space exploration and all that jazz, you know. And that's, yeah, what, I like, say, and that's what people in my like opinion. Solo. Yeah. Well, I like uh, messy and disgusting. I'm a messy, disgusting man. You'll yeah. probably like Gravity, that movie Gravity coming out. 
Uh, I know I want to see Elysium. That's for sure. That's going to be good. Are you right. afraid? Are you afraid of the future or something? No, he's not Me? afraid of the future. George, yeah, George. Am no, I afraid he's... of the future? No, not at all. Why? Well, because you only you only like uh, outer space things that are scary. Because <laughs> outer, sp- uh, outer space, uh, I, well, I like I like scary things in general. That's uh, you know you can uh, I can introduce you to several of my ex girlfriends, but Please um. Do. <laughs> there, uh, anyway, you know, keep going, keep going, George. <clears throat> <clears throat> um, I don't know. There's just something intriguing about not knowing what's around the corner. But these Star Trek and Star Wars movies are just like, okay, it's basically Earth in outer space. I don't want. Who cares? That's boring. I see what you're saying because there was a community already set up there. Yeah. Well, I, you might like then you might like the show Star Trek because Star Trek the show is all about like testing the limits and finding creepy things in outer space. At least yeah. some of the episodes are like that. Right. Yeah. Our I, mean, that, I mean, that's just that's still space exploration, but it, you know, but you're doing it alongside other aliens. And I mean, in in the case of like Kirk, like in in the Enterprise, they have like other species that they're working alongside with to continue their space exploration because obviously we already know that the universe is vast and God knows how many galaxies are up there and out there billions of miles away. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? God created this shit in like five days, Brian. Seven days. Six, no, six days. And then he rested. The the seventh. (laughs) On on the third day, he rested. I don't know what they teach you heathens in Long Island about evolution. We learned creationism. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, come on. Now we're all uh, made this way since the beginning of time. Hello. So how come I I came out darker? I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> it depends what part of the equator you were made on. It was very hot that day when you popped up. Oh, thanks, thanks. The the, 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 the the sun that God also created was. You was know, I think one, yeah. God put that. a um, God put a magnifying glass under you, Brian. Thank you. Yeah, he, tr- he tried to get rid of your ass, but it didn't work. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. Dodge the to, beam. Uh, <laughs> try, to, <laughs> try to burn you. And that's why we all have belly buttons, because God came up to us and poked us cutely. <laughs> <laughs> so are you, are you trying to say we're like Pillsbury, walking Pillsbury dough guys? What the hell are you trying to say? Yeah. That that was like the uh, that was like the seal of approval that that little poke. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, when I don't work out, I, I I'm very similar to the Pillsbury Doughboy. If you see a human without a, a belly button, send them back to the factory. They need they need their poke. <laughs> what, what if you just uh, walk up to somebody and just poke them in the in the stomach and ask, "Oh, I was just checking. I'm just checking. <laughs> You're good." <laughs> That's that's the equivalent of checking whether a woman has an Adam's apple or not, you know, just to make sure she's not a man. Have you have you had that problem? <laughs> I think that's more of a question for George. <laughs> <laughs> no, wh- whether or not my my previous conquests are heinous, they all had vaginas. Good Lord, <laughs> you, make, <laughs> you, you would actually have... like um, Star Wars Episode Six with that sand monster, then that might. <laughs> I like I like uh, you know there there were vaginas in place. Not that there's anything wrong with being gay. It's just not my cup of tea. Okay. Well, <laughs> what else is going on? There was oh, a couple of I things. read uh, I read that uh, I know for a little while now, for the past year or so, there's been a Beverly Hills Cop uh, TV show in production, sort of. And I wasn't 100% sure whether or not uh, Eddie Murphy was involved, uh, but I thought uh, he, he was. And then basically it had to, um, it was taking, taking place with his son. And he was, his son was also a cop and something like that. But now I read, um, that they're actually getting Could the wheels in motion for another movie. Oh, that's yeah. good. And Eddie Murphy's gonna be Axel Foley again. And I, I don't know where they're gonna go with it. Thank but, God, and hopefully he can convince Rick Moranis to get off that crap and do Ghostbusters. Oh yeah, it's a shame. We, like these guys that we grew up with and that were there before, you know, obviously we we came of age were fantastic, and they just disappeared. Yeah. Where's Beverly Hills Four going to take place? The amusement park again? Uh, yeah, I hope not. 
I mean, obviously it's going to be somewhere. It, obviously it's going to be somewhere in Beverly Hills, but <laughs> yeah, they that's yeah they'll they'll bring it back to the beginning with that one. I mean, uh, yeah, why wouldn't they? Well, if it was Superman Returns, they they film a sequel after twenty years in Tokyo or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, uh, did you guys hear anything about what's been going on in Russia? A little bit. Uh, well, with um. With the um, the the spy, I mean the NSA leaker. Excuse me. Oh yeah, shit, that too. No, I was talking about those gay protests. Right. So now, but, uh, that which one do you want to talk about? Um, what the what you were about to bring up? Anyway, I didn't hear anything new about the uh, white um, the NSA leaker. You, you know. Yeah. Well, he's he's, stu- he's stuck in limbo. Last time yeah, because he he originally went to Hong Kong and then he got extradited to Russia. And now they're trying to. Well, actually, it's causing tensions between America and Russia because it's get, it's like a mini Cold War. Like, no side wants to stand down. America wants him back, and mm-hmm. Russia doesn't want to give him up because that would make them look weak with uh, with holding a political asylum. People. So this this NSA guy uh, got in trouble from stuff on Craigslist, you know, NSA? Because I can't figure out what the issue is here. Uh yeah, Every, just, everyone was, was being sneaky, and yeah. he didn't want every, anyone to be sneaky anymore, so well, he told them, hey, look, stop being sneaky. He went on Craigslist, they found <laughs> out he had an Adam's apple, and now he's in hiding. Now he's on Sunset Boulevard, a block from me. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 these these matters are, are um, testy, because um, on one hand, you could say it's a freedom of speech argument, but... From a uh, government agency's point of view, it could be considered a, um, uh, even the WikiLeaks stuff could be considered um, a threat to the country because if you have agents overseas in hiding and stuff like that. I I don't know what the exact threat to the country against what he's saying would be, but I guess they're considering him a traitor for going to asylum or something like this. There's just so much sneaky shit going on that if you, you can't really concern yourself with all of it, you just can't. You're going to go absolutely insane. Now, if someone's listening in on my cell phone conversations, he's going to, he's not going to hear shit. People get all paranoid about that. I mean, if they, they listen to mine, there's going to be a lot of fighting with women, uh, talking to you, Chris, and then saying that my little brother's a fat asshole that's too lazy to do anything. Now, if they're going to gather any of that information from me and use it against me at some point, they can, they can be my guest. They can really be my guest. No. <laughs> well, just in case the NSA is listening, I was in in and out burger this week, and I was sluggish at work as a result. <laughs> well, five milkshakes later. <laughs> um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I should bring brought up on food crimes or what happened at In and Out Burger. <laughs> and what are you? What are you <laughs> Chris, Chris is the new hamburglar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the gut sticks out of the shirt though. <laughs> Ooh, don't mind if I do. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know what the the fate will be. I think he was trying to get to Ecuador, but come on, <laughs> you you he better hope that he stays with a powerful country like China or Russia because right. You see what they're doing. Actually, with, uh, I feel like I feel like this Cold War is like a three way. It's like America is the U S versus China and Russia, <laughs> and I everybody. Think China and Russia's relations are decent right now. Really, I think so. No, I'm just, well, I know, like, China, you know, is, 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 you know, it's like one of the bigger superpowers out there, so, I mean. Well, they do have the Mongolians in common, don't they? What the hell does that got to do with the team? Well, um, there is, um, well, up there by Mongolia, there is a, uh, a province of China that's just way out of the beaten path called Manchuria, and historically it's governed by whoever runs in there in the moment. <laughs> like, uh, Russia could be governing it. China could be governing it, and Japan could also be governing it. Gotcha. So explain really quick what's happening with these uh, in Russia with these protests. Oh, really quick before that, um, Japan and, and China are also having a little bit of tensions now because Japan is um, backing Philippines against China. Jesus, everyone's tripping, man. What's yeah. happening? Over here? Why, <laughs> China, why can't everyone just go about their business? Japan's our ally, so we got to... You know, we we you know that's stuff stuff like that. We get dragged into these things. Or I know. I'm I'm taking ourselves. Japan's side. I mean, look, I got a uh, a Toshiba TV. I got a, a, a several other electronics that were definitely made in Japan. I mean, I wouldn't have them 
if it wasn't for them. So I'm not going to take anybody else's side. I need my stuff. I well, need you, my electric. Well, we also have a ton of stuff that's made in China. It just only lasts for a week or two. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's an easy joke. Okay, so yeah. what's going on in Russia is um, that Russia has passed a law. Uh, I, I think at one point they had all-out gay uh, banned uh, homosexual stuff like a long time ago, but now that was uh, before the Soviet Union fell. But now they have passed an anti-gay propaganda law, which, uh, which means that if you cannot be um, uh, promoting homosexual stuff or, or talking positively about homosexual stuff to minors. So no advertising to minors is basically the extent of it. And um, I guess their point of view is, look, look at all the movies and stuff like that 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 are coming out that do have uh, a lot of gay overtones or that gay okay message and they're a traditionalist society so they don't want that and they, right. they their point of view is do what you're doing in the privacy of your home but if you put it in front of me and my kids then we're going to have a fight and it's not like an American protest like there is cops beating people with sticks and there is uh, beatings in the street like beatings while the camera's rolling like uh, the camera's capturing it all so it's it's a I guess it's a big deal over there. I know the Jamaican community wouldn't uh, care about that. Oh, you, you expect a response from me? <laughs> All right, never mind. Well, let me um, let me just pull up some. I was I was looking at some funny. Uh, not I mean it's not funny, but I I found some of it as humorous. Some of the Twitter things uh, that I saw. Um. Uh, this what this art. Someone writes. I will tell you what this article means. It means that Russia is off limits to faggots. Nothing more, nothing less. Uh, then someone re in response to that says, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, protest the Winter Olympics in Russia." Do you think Russia cares if you're protesting the Winter Olympics? <laughs> so, uh, some people started boycotting um, Russian vodka, and the vodka company said, "We're not the government. Why the hell are you boycotting our product?" Right. So it's kind of like a lot of um, miscommunication, I guess, or um, a lot of people speaking out on both sides, at least in, in Russia. But there's a lot of voices from outside of Russia that's saying, Russia, what you're doing is wrong. And there's a lot of voices from Russia saying, leave us alone. <laughs> yeah, it's everyone. Uh, I mean, let them operate how they want to operate. Obviously, it's morally wrong, but being morally wrong... <laughs> Doesn't really mean much these days. Wait, what's you know, what's that? What being morally what, wrong? Right, what what Russia is doing, prohibiting all whatever you know, any sort of communication, you know, about gay things, is obviously morally wrong. I mean, just because you're gay doesn't mean you're not a human. Yeah, so, I mean, I mean, no laws are going to change, but I guess the point of them protesting is that saying. Even if they're beating us up in the street, the protest is for getting the message out there to the public because we know that the laws themselves or the government is not going to change. Yeah, we need we need uh, to send uh, Rocky Balboa in there. If I could change, <laughs> and you could change. Well, it's funny you should mention. <laughs> it's funny. No, it's funny. No, it's actually funny you should mention that because they actually are going to make another Rocky film. What? But it's yeah. But here's the thing, though. There, I mean, Rocky's gonna be just a trainer, oh, and no, apparently no. Apo Apollo Creed's oh. son. He's gonna be training Apollo Creed's son or grandson or something like that. Oh, oh, oh no! Without Apollo I mean, Creed in the movie? No, not Apollo Creed. His yeah, son his, or grandson? Uh, they can find Tommy Gunn to do this. What? They can find Tommy Gunn to get trained by Rocky again? No. That <laughs> happened once. It didn't work. Well, it Ra didn't. Well, yeah, the thing yeah. is that it's good, but the Creed, they're going to call it Creed, if I'm not mistaken. And the actor that they're interested in getting is uh, Michael B. Jordan, who's hot off of uh, Fruitvale Station. Yeah, I heard that was good. Yeah, so they're thinking, they, you know, obviously the kid's going to have to bulk up because he, he's pretty skinny. So we'll see how that goes. Unless they're going to make him, like, you know, into some welterweight, you know, boxer. But other than that, he really needs to bulk up. Sylvester Stallone was only, what, five, six? The hell was I got to do with the team? Well, because they always promoted him as a heavyweight, but in real life he would have been like a welter, a middleweight. Well, no, heavyweight, obviously you have to wait. You have to be, a, you know, you have to be in a certain pound range, if you will, you know? Yeah, but you're not going to bulk up 
to that pound range and have when fighting a guy that's eight inches taller than you, you're going to lose. Yeah. Nine, in, nine inches taller than you, it doesn't matter the weight, so that's why you would have to be at a certain weight class. But that's why, um, that's why it always made Rocky's villains look so much stronger. Right. And that's I mean, why it always made the actors that Rocky fought look look strong in real life because you because believe he's so sure. you believe because from so watching sure. Rocky that he was six foot two, two hundred twenty five pounds, so that meant his villains were all eight feet tall in the, in <laughs> comparison. Like seven feet tall. Right. It, they almost they got more comic comic bookish, you know, as the the series went on up until like when he faced his uh his protege Tommy. And that was a, they should have kept, at that point, you had Rocky 3 that brought a cartoony, then you had Rocky 4 where it was <laughs> ridiculous cartoony. You could have had Superman versus Godzilla, uh, you could have had Rocky <laughs> versus Godzilla, you could have had Rocky in space. Right. You could have, you could, that could, that series could have went in that direction and, and made like a movie every two or three years. That would have been funny. What are you talking about? Like, just have Rocky versus the T one thousand or some bullshit, <laughs> or yeah. T like some Terminator type uh, boxer. Yeah, yeah, like just make him an action hero that just happens to always be wearing boxing gear for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> With the American flag uh, shorts. And you know what? Um, uh, Sylvester Stallone and Arnold are going to be in a movie together. I told them. Yeah, I like the. I personally, I like the first um title for the film is called the tomb because that's basically what the um the the prison that they're in that's what it's called because nobody gets out or is that bo where both actors belong at this point <laughs> i didn't your word not mine um but um <laughs> they, they could be in the underworld franchise the underworld franchise i thought uh kate beckinsale had that things fish dry <laughs> oh, they're, they're just there they're down there pretty soon uh, Arnold and, uh, and Sly are going to have to make a Death Becomes her sequel <laughs> well it is funny that Arnie and Kate are actually tied together because they both did a Total Recall ver or ver they're a different version of Total Recall so I totally didn't recall that but I'm you didn't? no I'm just I'm screwing around but I'm not <laughs> Hey, Jackie the Dope Man, five 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 wine. The um, the total, re stuff, the total recall stuff. remake was a, a huge, massive piece of shit. Really? Was, yeah, that was weird. That was a weird movie. Yeah, Chris and I saw that one together, and I mean it's Total Recall, so I'm I'm gonna go see it, of course. But um, what a piece of junk. And it wasn't the girl's fault. It was just that the fact that they didn't have like a strong leading man in in the case of Colin Farrell. Like, no, they need that's that's the weird thing with Colin Farrell. He's he's entertaining. I like watching him. I'm a fan of his, but his movies suck. Uh, most, not all. Most, I, I don't know what it is. Does he have? Does he does he pick bad movies? Do the, do the people around him tell him to do these specific movies? That just aren't good because I think he's a very good actor, right? But the movies just aren't. I don't know, man. <laughs> he's he's. It's like he switched bodies with Keanu Reeves. Keanu Reeves, it's considered a not so good <laughs> actor that got a lot of good roles. <laughs> Colin right. a good actor that got a lot of bad roles. It's crazy. Keanu Reeves is a, is, a, is a character in real life, man. Like he, he's he, a character. He, he's a character in of himself. There you go. Yeah, but I mean, absolutely. And but it's still, crazy. Chris has to watch Point Break. Yeah, he's I never see seen that. it. Never that, seen. What a fantastic movie that is! Hey, you know who that? You know who directed that, correct? No, Catherine Bigelow. Oh, really? Yeah, she directed. Oh man, that. I, I didn't know that. Now you do, kid. Hey, check yeah. out this tweet. Thanks, kid. Everyone knows that homophobes are gay, and Putin, so are you. <laughs> that, that was an actual tweet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what is what are the what latest film are you guys gonna go see uh, this week coming up? I What's think two out? guns, two guns, as opposed to two no. chains. Two no. guns, I will see that. I um, I don't know if I will go see it right away, but I'll see I'll that see, at some point. See two guns. Oh, the the way way back is out. I'm hearing very good things about it. 
Yeah, I, actually, I wanted to see the to-do list, and I heard it wasn't... It got not so good reviews. Really? Which one is that? The one with, uh, was it Aubrey Plaza? She's the um, the lead, and she's been, she's in that Parks and Rec Creations show. Oh, yeah, she's, she's, she's cute. She's got, like, a morose cuteness to her. A morose cuteness. Have, did you hear that? I mean, I'm talking about her. Talking to her. Did you hear that? <laughs> Hit me up, baby. I'm single. Yeah. <laughs> he's single and he's also morose. <laughs> yeah, we we could be the the morose mofos. But um, that was terrible. Um, the that uh, I'm hearing terrible things about uh, what was it called? I think uh, only God knows why. What, what is that movie called? The, the unofficial only God, drive. Only, only, only God forgives. Uh, yeah, only God is, forgives. I heard it's very bloody and gory. No, I but I, I, I hear that it's it's nonsensical, and yeah. it's very uh, everything is coming out of left field, and it's just not entertaining. Well, that's a Korean that's a Korean uh, action movie for you, <laughs> except they are entertaining. <laughs> There's like a lot of ultra violence in those films. Yeah, I might go see Pacific Rim, but you guys saw that already. That will yeah, we'll see it. We'll talk about it for a third time. I mean, yeah. uh, I'm just gonna go see it. Why not? Uh, it's monsters fighting each other. I'll I see why not. I saw the Steve well, Jobs. I saw the the Steve Jobs movie trailer again. And I got sick again for the second time. You just hate everything that has to do with Apple. But watch that trailer. Oh, yes. That trailer is a First, butt kiss. Correct. That trailer is correct. a butt kiss. All right. I mean, I don't it's doubt it's with uh, what's his name, Ashton Kutcher. I think it has something to do with Kutcher because I mean, all former last... glory, former glory. I mean, let's be honest. What's what's the last one he did where you're like, you know what? He wasn't that bad. And I yeah. like Butterfly Effect. Oh, Butterfly Effect is getting a reboot of the same movie. A remake? Why? Yeah. Why? Uh, Why? It didn't even come out ten years ago, did it? I don't know. No, no, it didn't. Oh, it came out in two thousand four. Right, so it's I, basically ten years. Oh, oh, all right, ten years, but still, but still, why the hell are they gonna remake something like that? You know. Speaking of getting physically sick when looking at movie related things, why do? <laughs> whenever I pass those those posters for Smurfs too, I get physically sick, and I don't know why. Because of the commerce, son. Because it's the Smurfs too. That's <laughs> <laughs> Double Smurfs. I get when I see that, I'm just disgusted. <laughs> just completely disgusted when I see those. Those posters. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I never watched. I never watched the cartoon, so I can't. I can't fully appreciate it. You never mm-hmm. watched Smurfs as a kid? No, nah, I never did. Hmm. The I Smurfs know. was um, being protested against when it was out as a cartoon because of um, of socialist sentiments in the in the cartoon. How they all work together and have a little job function of society. <laughs> That's funny. And how fucked up was it? Yeah, how fucked up was this? There was characters called Worker Smurf who always had a hammer and were expected to work, but then they gave other guys a name like Grumpy Smurf who didn't have any job and were just grumpy. Oh, that's like my little. That's like my little brother. Oh. Like everyone exists in society. Some, if you work, you're just given the name Worker. But if you're grumpy, then they just give you the name Grumpy and let you just exist. I think right. I'd be I'd be asshole Smurf. That would be that would be my name. Uh, Chris be would be Chris would be uh, uh, paranoid Smurf, Whoa. and you, Brian, would be um, Negro Smurf. Wait a second, Top Cat the movie I comes out be, next. I, I gotta all, get all technical for it. That's Top Cat. Top Cat the movie comes out next week. Top Top Cat. Top Cat the movie. I don't it's know coming out it when? Next week. That that was a good show. The original one. Wait a minute, you're talking about the car, the, not the one with the cartoon cats. Yeah, the cartoon where he's like, where, where uh, they were always being monitored by the worst cop in history, Officer Dibbles. <laughs> Dibbles, Dibbles, baby, oh, let us slide this one. Okay, top cat. I don't know, Dibbles, you know, you gotta have to prove it, be, that I did it beyond a reasonable doubt and all that. <laughs> some, some bullshit. <laughs> and he always yeah. used the emergency, like, phone line. <laughs> this, I don't understand how this officer was allowed to remain on the force if he was constantly being bribed by a street cat. <laughs> right. <laughs> um. So wait, they actually came out with a movie or they actually made a film or is it gonna, they just announced it? Does it open and says coming soon, Top Cat. It's already, oh, so it's it's already got a 14% on Rotten Tomatoes. 
Oh, okay. Um, so hey guys, like, do you know? Oh, sorry. Do you know if that movie Clear History came out on HBO? I'm not sure if it. That, uh, that comes aired. out uh, August. Well, out next month. Next month. August. Oh, all right. I wasn't sure if it aired already because I'm looking very forward to that. Actually, it's it, it looks John Hamm and Larry David in the same movie playing enemies. <laughs> That's gonna be good. Well, it doesn't seem like anything's coming out good next week, which which is good because uh, next week we have a guest in the studio, Ted Doyle. Doyle. Famous Ted Doyle is coming next week. That's gonna be exciting. I'm gonna ask him uh, a lot of questions. I have a lot of questions for him. Mm. Hey, um. Real? Is there anything else going on? Oh, uh, uh, if there's any um, anyone interested in sports, obviously this whole steroid thing for baseball is hitting ahead. Uh, yes, Ryan Braun, sense. who was a former MVP of the Milwaukee Bre- former National League MVP, current okay. star of the Milwaukee Brewers, just got suspended for the remaining 63 games of the season right. for his name coming up in this biogenesis steroid clinic down in Florida. <laughs> Now, a Rod, yeah, down in Florida, Chris's favorite state. So <laughs> now, a Rod's name is has been floating around this also all over the place. Now, apparently, there's rumors going around that they are trying to suspend him for the rest of the season of this season and for all of 2014. Yeah, he'll right. he'll spend some time on the golf course. Yeah, I mean, he's just going to relax. The guy's making $30 million a year. That's what right. those guys on Active Killing were doing. They were playing golf and, like, games and stuff like that. What a shock. Yeah. So, is, is there, I heard, that, is there also a rumor that they might ban him from the game, even though that might be extreme? Um, that was that was talked about. I mean, because ESPN is basically a sports tabloid at this point. Um, they were talking about that. I think that's a little oh. bit harsh. Look, this is right. all they need to do. Well, they, I mean, yeah, get rid yeah, of steroids altogether. Put more stands in the seats. Put make the home runs shorter, so there's more home runs per game, and you don't need steroids to do it. You'll have more people in the seats and more action in the game. I mean, it it, it goes back to what um, Buck O'Neill said um, a few years back when before he passed away. Buck O'Neill was like, you know, he was an imba- he used to play in the Negro leagues and all that. And, oh, good old um, Uncle Buck. I, yes, Uncle Buck. Anyway, they asked him about, like, you know, what he thought about the steroid scandal and all that kind of stuff. He said, listen, mm. these guys can juice up to the kingdom come, and, and yet at the end of the day, you still need to have eye-hand coordination. Okay. So if, the, if these guys want to, like, juice up and whatnot, let them. Besides, I mean, it's hard to believe when, nine, when back in 98 when – they were all hitting all those home runs and all that kind of stuff. Everybody was like, "Yeah, this shit is fun and all that kind of stuff." And they were making a ton of money. And you know, the you know, these right. owners were making a ton of money and right. all that. The and now are still making a ton of money no matter what. Dirty little right. Things. But I'm just saying that you're like how they it's just ridiculous how they just changed their tune like ten years later. You know, because they started yeah because uh, yes, I, I don't. Becoming to me, I don't care. I want. I do want to see. I want to see home runs, and I want to see. And I want to see <laughs> the best athletes. I want to see the best athletes out there, regardless of whether they're juiced up or not, take to the field. Well, you're. A, you're care. an all. Are you wearing an American T-shirt at this moment? No, listen. No, I see. I see your point of view. I should be. I see your point of view, but what you have to keep in mind that all these guys that are playing right now, they are human, right? And so yeah. humans, before they become Not adults, anymore. yeah, well, the, they make enough money to be uh, intergalactic space warriors, <laughs> right? But, but, um, uh, but uh, before yes. before before humans become adults, they're children. So if you say that steroids is cool and all these sports, which they're being used anyway, but if you come out and say that it's cool. Then when are you going to start giving steroids to kids in the little leagues because you know that's what they're going to have to do at some point? Like what? That's that's terrible. You can't well, have that. I guess you got to. Well, they, well, I mean, listen. In the defense of like, say, a McGuire and and a Clemens, I'm not I'm not justifying what they did. It seems that way, but not I'm not doing that. These guys realize that you know that what they were doing in their prime, they couldn't do. Anymore, like in the case of Clemens, like he couldn't get his uh, fastball up to 90, so he decided to juice up. And with in the case of McGuire, his bat speed slowed down, so he decided, you know what, I gotta, you know, 
I'm going to need something to to help me regain my bat speed, and the same thing with Barry Bonds. The you baby know. boomer generation. Listen, just, the, listen yeah. at the end of the, I mean, baseball as a whole, it, it's a very unnatural thing to do in terms of like you know throwing the ball and also hitting the ball. You know, a ball that's coming at you 80 or 90 miles an hour. It's very unnatural. It's not like basketball where you're like you know you're running and and shooting. You know, or and or like hockey where you're just skating, mm. all that kind of stuff. It, mm. It's a very unnatural thing for the human body to do so eventually i mean i'm not saying that uh that in the other sports you're going to lose your skills you know a little slower but it just you know sometimes you just need a leg up for the most part yeah but look at all these guys waiting in the wings never got a chance because this baby boomer boomer generation just couldn't let go of shit (laughs) so like there's like a weird generation of people who never got a chance because there was guys holding on desperately to former glory, and that hurt. That hurts an industry. That hurts a sport because when there's when there's when the young guys aren't passing the torch, when the old guys aren't passing the torch to the young guys, now you have a ten. Now you have a gap where the young guys coming up. You see that the force is out of balance here. Sometimes when it's time to retire, it's time to retire. Yeah, Chris has a, a beef with uh, a, a very uh, specific, very prominent. Athlete in I sports do? entertainment industry. What are you talking oh, about? With that, he has a very, very large beef with this person. Have beef and with no one. Chris has a, Chris has a beef jerky with this man. But so, um, well, which sport is it? In baseball or, or the sports uh, entertainment industry? He has a very big beef with people oh, holding man. on to former glory and not, you know, and well, and, I mean, uh, listen, oppressing. I mean, right. But I can understand, like, them holding on. I mean, that, I'm just saying, when you get to that level that very few people get to, you know, that's a drug in and of itself. That's like, that's cocaine, heroin, weed, all rolled into one. Yeah, I'll take that. But I'm just saying, by the time that, you know, when your skills start to diminish and when, you know, people, like, you're not getting the offers that you want, you know, you start, you, you, you start to get desperate, and you know you pretty much are willing to do whatever it takes to get back to the top. Yeah, it's you know? a it's a problem with being a child athlete too. You get your ass kissed, and that's why the Latins are 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 strong in when they come to the MLB because they haven't had their ass kisses at all. They had a fight to keep playing. Yeah, the Spaniels. They had a, they uh, yeah. never got their butt kissed as kids. <laughs> they never they never look. They never were told that's great. They they you know it was just keep working. I know keep that's working, why that's why that's. Uh, uh, Yasiel Puig, this new Dodger star that came up, he's from Cuba. He's a Cuban defector or, or whatnot. And, Is that the, you know, he's, uh, he plays for the Dodgers, right? Yeah, he's outfield for the Dodgers, and he's like this phenom that's been doing uh, monumental things, as you know, since he's been up here. But, um, you know, the media is like, oh, he's not friendly, and the clubhouse, people in the clubhouse are, oh, you know, blah, 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 he's not friendly, and, and he doesn't listen. Like, he, grew, this kid grew up in Cuba. <laughs> There's a dictatorship in Cuba. You have to be scared of if the government is going to kill you. So, so you're saying you should treat them like they're in a dictatorship? No, yes. no, no, no. You just no. I'm saying that you you have to be aware of the culture shock. He's not going to he's not going to line up into this culture right away and be straight friendly with everyone and conform and be open to the media. I mean, the, the, it's a communist state. Like, look what yeah. happened when you were talking about the, the episode of Vice. And how everything was controlled. Same there. So you come yeah. over here and everything is free, and you you don't know how to take to it. You keep to yourself. You, you, you people people don't bring uh, welcome these things right away, especially mm-hmm. coming from an oppressive state such as Cuba. Or you do like Scarface and just uh, get as much as you can out of America. <laughs> Fuck you. Yeah, I, I, I see what you're saying. Um, yeah, it is, it is though the case that you have players in this country that. When it comes and in basketball is included, and I guess football too, where um, and baseball especially, where it's such a skilled game that every time something happens in your life, if the people around you aren't like disciplining you or raising you just as a kid to grow up, they're just telling you you're great whenever you get in trouble. That's really kind of creates an ego complex. Of course, I mean, look at LeBron James. He's been he's been a phenom since the time he grabbed the basketball, probably. 
So you or think Kobe uh, Bryant, the same thing. Yeah, Kobe Bryant too. Yeah, but Kobe Bryant, it was all about being raised. Kobe Bryant was raised differently. He he lived in Europe for a few years, and believe it or not, that 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 cultures you, man. It's not like here in the states. It's completely different. He's 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 a a fierce fierce competitor, but he does not have the arrogance of a let's say someone that's been his someone's ass that's been sucked his entire life. I'm not saying undeservedly so, but like of a LeBron James, and he yes he has two championships now. He deserves all that, but it's it's just it's an arrogance that comes off of the person that just from being raised. Kobe Bryant doesn't give that off. The guy has five championships and all that. So if he has that arrogance now, yeah, obviously. Several MVPs, all that kind of stuff. But he yeah, doesn't but, yeah, but someone, that. Yeah, but uh, to your point, someone who, who wasn't raised that way wouldn't, would be class. Like, look at Tim Duncan. He's calm. He's he's smart. He seems like a good team leader. Yeah. I was watching he, the finals and LeBron, okay, LeBron James won the game, but there's moments where it looks like he's crying on the court. Or something's going on there. I didn't know what that was, and then someone says, "Yeah, he's he got spoiled or something." Right. No, that's, oh, that's, okay. that's the thing. I'm not a big basketball fan, but I found it very interesting. Yeah, the different the different characters. What um real quick before we go, did you guys see that viral video that blew up this week on YouTube of the 11 year old girl from Yemen who ran away from home? Yes, so, I did. I actually did see that. Well, she she ran away from an arranged marriage, correct? Something yeah. like that. Okay, yeah. Eleven years so. old. She's in the back yeah. of a car, and she's basically saying, "These are the people I'm running away from. I don't think it's right that I should be married off, and it's crazy. We don't get education. We're just forced to be in a marriage from the time we're children. I don't. Mm-hmm. I'd rather die." Yeah. Little girl, do you think that was staged at all, Brian? It's it seemed almost too well, you know, thought out in terms of what was coming out of her mouth. Yeah, know, I couldn't so. believe she was, she was <laughs> saying very intelligent things. But she was she, speaking she, English? She did also have passion. No, like, no, she was very no, passionate. No, but she, she was, was very, very passionate. passionate. Yeah. Wait, was she speaking English? No, no, she wasn't. She okay. had like a translate. I mean, she, it, it, it's subtitles, so. It might be true because, listen, as Americans, uh, are the, 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 as the generations pass on, I think kids get dumber. <laughs> so, it, it, in other parts of the country, um, you they know, it's smart. not necessarily so. Yeah. yeah Wait a second, fun. she's 11 and she could read? Yeah, no. I mean, well, no. it's not. Yeah, that and, and, and pretty much she has her own ideas at such an early age in terms of. And she has her own ideals. Wait a second, so, so you're saying in other countries they start reading before they play high school football? Oh, for fuck's sake. Jesus. Usually. Usually. <laughs> wow. I don't think that's. I don't think that's the case. It's just, you know, I'm quite sure she's, you know, she's been exposed to Western culture and, you know, yeah. she has like, you know, the situation thrust upon her in terms of being forced into a marriage. It's like, wait a second, you know, why the hell do I have to be thrust into this situation when, you know, there, there's a window of opportunities out there for, for me to do. And it's like, you know, I can see why she could be, She's very angry in, in, in this case, you know. Yeah, I guess that's the good thing about all this YouTube stuff. We're starting to see how everyone else lives and as a group kind of collectively um, saying, that's cool, but that part is bullshit. Right. I guess yeah. that's just the future. We can't fight and it. It's no, and it's no different, like, you know, when, they, you know, like when they're on the other side of the world and they see, you know, like Western stuff and... Then they, then they juxtapose with, you know, the way they're living, and it's like, wait a second, there's something wrong here. You and know, they, like, they probably see the same thing. They probably say, well, we respect their work ethic and the American dream, but at the same time, Jersey Shore is kind of stupid. <laughs> I'm sure I, still, I am. <laughs> I still haven't watched the last season of that. I should. <laughs> I, I never saw the first season. I feel happy. I, I've watched no, zero seasons. <laughs> Don't worry about wait, it. Wait, you yeah. watched Jersey Shore? <laughs> I used to I watch it. Yeah, that was the only reality show that I watched. Um, don't ask me why. I don't know. I don't, I don't know why I watched it. But literally, I haven't. I never watched another reality show. I guess it's like a, one of those things that you just can't look away from. It was. It was kind of like that. Like I just wanted to see. Like uh, at the time, MTV uh, was promoing it hard, so I was like, "All right, I have to check out this mess." 
and I watched the first episode, and I was like, hey, I kind of like these guys. Like, I, there, there's something likable and hateable about every single character. <laughs> yeah. in this that was the scary thing about the act of killing. You were, like, laughing along with those guys and then realizing they're fucking rapists and murderers. Yeah. Doesn't make them less human. Wait a minute. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, um, speaking of Middle Eastern uh, stuff, uh, so, you know... There's a lot of crazy things that go on there in regards to women, too, in terms of, like, um, let's say if a woman gets raped, it's blamed on her. For, you shouldn't have been in the public square while everyone was causing, while everyone was uh, protesting or, you know, you were a reporter, so we're sending a message through you. And um, apparently there was a Norwegian woman who went to go work at uh, a company in United Arab Emirates, mm-hmm. and she was raped, and she reported the crime, and the... Now she's being thrown in jail because it is a crime to not be like the way she was in public. Yeah. Um. Uh. There's a certain amount. Like you need a certain amount of witnesses, or else you're deemed a liar as a woman. Really. But it was like some crazy gang rape stuff, and now she's being. Not only did her company fire her for immoral activities, but she's being thrown in jail for immoral activities and. Uh, She's getting thrown in jail for sex outside of marriage. This is crazy. And here's why this story is gaining a lot of traction. Well, because of the obvious. Um, It turns out that Janet Jackson's husband is the owner of that company. Jermaine Dupri? (laughs) No, she just divorced that motherfucker. She divorced a long time. She's dating dating an Arab, or she's married to an Arab um, uh, billionaire. So they, this company gave the lady her walking papers, and so she's not gaining any more money, and she's stuck over there now in uh, in jail, awaiting trial. And she could face, like, 20 years in jail or something crazy like that. Wow. Let me let me see. What does it say? That's a spicy meatball. I don't see the amount of time here, but it, it does say she um, she was sentenced to prison. And well, that's, yeah. un- that's unfortunate. And that's how a lot of these places are. They have a rule that says, nope, you violated the rule, and that's that. So so people, <laughs> I understand we're living in, like, the equality uh, era of society, but come on, as a woman who's a journalist or something, stop going to these places. These places do not want you there. Yeah, you're asking for trouble, but I guess that's how barriers are broken. That's how walls are torn down. That's just how what? it works. What do you mean? Um... I mean, yeah. that's if these in order, in order, in order for them to to pretty much break down the barriers, to, these conflicts have to be have to arise. Yeah, I, I guess I see what you're saying because uh, this happened in India too, and the Indians actually threw the guys to the wolves because uh, there was a tourist visiting from like Switzerland, mm-hmm. and a similar sort of thing happened, and the Indians, the government was uh, everyone came out against it. They're like starting campaigns in India and stuff like that. Like, do, you know, um, first of all, don't mess with tourists like that. But also just for their own, and th- I thought this was kind of cool, like from their own point of view, they're like, we don't want our society to be this way in the first place. So they're starting some things inside of India to um, to persecute those who would do it and to also like educate people on like uh, equality and gender and all that stuff. Well, India is big and stinky. Well, what do you yeah. think they did a good thing? In general, they just smell a little bit. India, I think, also has some sort of a culture clash. I think the western part of India is Muslim, and the eastern part might be Hindu. Uh, there's definitely, like, um, a mix of religions there. Well, not that there's not here, but I don't know if that comes into play at all. Because, obviously, it's... they're right on the border of the Middle East, and that stuff kind of... The conflicts there sometimes creep into the western border. Mm-hmm. That's, a, that's a possibility. Or, nope. or probably, you know. Well, everyone's got a lot of problems anywhere, but I, I couldn't. I mean, I guess some people are just more adventurous than me, and they know they're they're putting themselves in danger. But it seems like some risks are not worth it. Yeah, yeah, it depends. It depends where where your um, priorities lie. True. Well, shit. This lady's in jail now. That sucks. Prison. God yeah, help me if go to prison over there. God knows. Well, prison over here is not that nice either. No, but you get three square a day. You get to work out and stuff. Yeah, here, yeah. You know, over there, it's like all bets are off. Yeah, God knows what's going to happen. Like Bass Uh, Rutten said, God knows what they're going to do with you. 
<laughs> so I guess that's all I have. Yeah. Anything else going on? No, um, I think we we cut well. Aside from you know the uh, Royals naming their their um, son George, congratulations. Mm-hmm. That's about it. Yeah. I'm, t- I'm telling follow, you. Why does America follow those stories? Because well, it's, it's a, they're royalty, like it's a prince, you know? Didn't we fight a war to not care about this story? <laughs> fought two no, wars we, against No, them. no, no, no. We fought a war not to get taxed by them. There's different. <laughs> <laughs> we fought a war not to get taxed by them. Taxation <laughs> without representation. <laughs> the War of 1812, too. Those are the same deal. Yeah, yeah, I know. But I'm just saying, like, you know. <laughs> They, we fought the, that war just not to get taxed, but we we'll follow the royalty. That's that's fine, Chris. I'm I mean, impressed. It's, it's, yeah. What's that? Well, oh, you you know you remember all these wars. As soon as I was done with school, I I said, "Thank goodness I don't have to remember any of this bullshit again." But those who do not respect history are doomed to repeat it. Hence, me torturing myself over and over with the same situations. So I think you're on the right track. <laughs> well, and I'm the one making the mistakes here. Well, the War of 1812 uh, was interesting because a lot of it didn't need to be fought. There was a huge battle in, in uh, New Orleans that um, a peace treaty had already been signed, but it took so long for things to get across via boat in those days. that uh, They didn't have email? <laughs> yeah, there was a bunch of fighting, crazy, crazy battles going on in, in America, and then they didn't realize the peace treaty had already been signed and was in the mail. That's crazy. On a lighter note, um, I have been watching a lot of The Sopranos lately again. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just, I, I forgot what a great, great, great show that is. That's one of the best dramas of our generation. Hands down, top five, I'd say. Mm. Hands down, hands down. If any of you watched it, I don't know. But also, you know, in the passing of Tony, of, uh, Tony Soprano, of, Tony James, S- Gan- <laughs> of James Gandolfini, you know, I started... Uh, I guess it made me want to watch it again. <laughs> Is that your vigil? Did you have a candlelight vigil? I don't know. I don't know, but it did make me sad when he when he. It's a yes or no question, ain't that hard? Come on. You had a candlelight vigil, didn't you? Yeah, I'm gonna have a candlelight dinner right now. You're invited. <laughs> I'm blushing. Anyway, now, any other big news? No, nah, I guess that's it. We'll wrap it up. Um, okay, so for next week, we're gonna have Ted Doyle in here. Uh, also, we'll try to get George's soundboard back, his old soundboard. <laughs> yeah, that, that's gonna that's gonna be interesting. We're gonna experiment a little bit and see what happens with it. Because if you think I don't talk a lot now, wait till I have my sound effects. He's oh. gonna hide behind his little soundboard, pressing yeah. buttons. <laughs> that's gonna bring that that brings back memories already. You know, it remi- you know what it reminds me of? Uh, what's his name? Aziz Snary. Where he was like, uh, was it rapping Rodney or something like that? Or he was Rodney. Oh, yeah, Rodney. <laughs> yeah, he was Rodney, and he had that, that dude up on stage with him that would do, like, the sound bites. That's going to be you, George. <laughs> well, well, we'll try to make it a little more grown up than mine. We'll give you some news clips. <laughs> Nothing hateful, George. Nothing hateful. <laughs> we'll give you some I don't know sound bites what, like Robin Hood. Like those I don't Robin know things. what you're talking about. I'm sorry. Um... <laughs> Okay. I not hear any any hateful uh, sound bites. <laughs> no, just they're gonna be mostly self-deprecating. No, don't no, worry. no, uh, no hate speech out of those sound bites. Oh, don't don't worry. When I start talking, like when I'm done with a, a statement, he's gonna like spew them out. I can I can feel it. Yeah, don't don't just use the sound <laughs> don't use use the soundboard to pick on Brian. I I. <laughs> I don't know what either of you are speaking about. I, I feel the I feel his fingers crossing right now, and it doesn't sound right, but I'm just saying, you know, I can sense, the, you know, his fingers are already crossed. Right <laughs> and, and don't do that thing where you're like, I have a perfect sound for this, and then you have to wait like ten seconds because you're, you're like the, the program crashed. <laughs> no, no, no. So uh, once uh, again, I um, I I don't know what you guys seem to be mentioning. Uh, at this point in this conversation, but we'll yeah. see. We'll, we'll see what happens. Later. Yeah, a week later, it's like, that, and then Chris is gonna be. That's exactly what I was talking about, George. <laughs> there you go again. What the hell, George? <laughs> um, right. We'll see. I, you know, sounds add to the experience. 
Hey, all right, all right, so we'll get going. Brian, real quick, can you say, and we'll use this for a soundbite in the future, can you say, shooting the ish, and can you say, you've been listening to shooting the ish? I'll say it the way I feel like saying it. <clears throat> Shut up and say it the way he asked you. You've been listening to shooting the ish. Oh, that was pretty good. Can you also just say shooting the ish, like just shooting the ish? Shooting the ish. And can we have one more, a little more upbeat? Shooting the ish. What a schmuck. You're such a schmuck. <laughs> Alright, well, we'll, we'll see everybody next time with Ted Doyle. Alright, guys. Alright, later. Later. <laughs>